All right, we should be live. What is up, everyone? Got some, got a lot of membership renewals actually coming in right now. I'm also gonna play up all the ones that happened uh, between now and last week. So let's get all those out. Give credit where credit is due to all the supporters through the membership program. All right. Happy Wednesday, happy Wednesday. We got, who was first today? We have Craig Lilly. Of course, unsurprising there. What's up, Donut Farmer? Uh, let's see, we've got Frostbite, IO, Stang Tone 7, what's up, what's up? Jason, I'm first in Zach's stream, so. Oh, are you? I somehow doubt that. Um. Im import race, what's up? We got Mod Kevin going in the house. Uh, high Power Danny, what's up? Coalition Gaming Chris, hey Chris, how you doing? Why is this every single time? Uh, KL130. We got I'm on tech. Federico Gonzalez, BML. I thought, oh yeah. So we're going to talk about the whole Linus hack thing, which, funny enough, like, a lot of the times we have kind of slow tech news. And then the right after stream, like the day after or the weekend after, in this case with the whole Linus thing, I think it happened Wednesday night, Thursday morning. I remember, like, I j we just had the stream and I actually ended up staying up late that night. Uh, and... I think it happened around, what, like, 2 a.m. my time? 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Uh, on the following Thursday. So I was like, man, like, slow tech news week, and then boom, Linus gets hacked, which is kind of crazy seeing it in real time. What's up, Extreme Zone? How you doing? Oh yeah, D4 beta impressions. And naked, naked Linus and Luke? Both li Luke and Lick? And Linus naked? No, Luke, I don't believe Luke was naked. Uh, but Linus was indeed naked. Was he even, like, completely naked? I, I know in all the footage they blurred it out, but... Was he still wearing his boxers? Like, was his thing poking out of the hole in the front or something? Why did he have to... Why did he have to, uh... Censor his, like... You know, crotch down there region. If you're wearing boxers, you should be fine. I don't think you have to censor that. Yeah, and oh, in the way show, apparently Luke was naked for the first half of the morning. Okay. <laughs> totally naked? Wait, seriously? Okay. That's going to be the first poll of the day then. Uh, do you sleep completely naked? Uh, First poll, how do y'all sleep at night in terms of what you're wearing? I can't, the thing about sleeping naked is, you know when you fart, your underwear kind of acts like as a filter to catch, I'm not saying stuff should be coming out like when you fart, but b because there's any smell at all, there are going to be some particles. Like if you took a hundred people and had them fart bare butt, onto a white blanket, I guarantee you that blanket will not be that pure white color anymore. I'm not saying <laughs> you always expel something, but just sleeping naked, it just feels like you're not protecting your sheets from some of your, 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 uh, your body parts down there. Yeah, just because there's any kind of stench at all, there are particles, and I'm pretty sure those particles aren't pure white. 
So if you got bed sheets or anything like that, it's catching something. But how do people sleep? People, half of the people voting so far are PJs, normal clothes. Uh, I so I'm a I go between like you know shorts and like a t shirt or tank top to like just boxers. Um, but yeah, the full naked thing, I I don't know. Is that like a more of a rich people thing? You think? I'm just uh, that's just a random comment, just because Linus has a lot of money, and that's one sample size that we we know so far based on the whole thing wash up what happens you sleep naked there's a fire in your home you get dressed before you go outside nobody got time for that <laughs> then you're going outside naked exactly that's a good point kevin no boxer yep boxers and shorts the same here sleep better and sleepwear yeah Not how I expected the stream to start off, lol. Me neither. You know what? Aside from picking the topics for these streams, I as soon as the stream starts, it could literally go in any direction depending on where my mind decides to randomly go as I talk through the topics or where the audience decides uh, to take it. So, yeah, that's how we, we, we end up talking about wearing underwear or not. Wear underwear when sleeping on white. Yes, that is the tech tip of the week. I mean, you should wear underwear. Just because there's not a visual stain doesn't mean there, there isn't some kind of, you know, uh, bacteria or whatever associated with it. The one lad says, this exact thing has been mentioned by my girlfriend before. I still sleep naked, LMAO. Yeah. Rudolph sending love from South Africa. What's a Rudolph? Sending love from up here in uh, the Pacific Northwest, West Washington. <laughs> What's up, Shane Eslick? Just wear brown sheets. Okay. Okay, uh, I did see a, uh, something from... One second, I need to restart this. Why does this happen every single week? Okay, here we go. We're good. Uh, Mod Kevin Go, where are you at? I gotta bring back up your your question. Oh, wait, did you remove it? Uh it was about Diablo 4, what were my impressions on it, but did anyone, oh, here we go. Where's your Diablo 4 beta impressions? Um, so did anyone else play the open beta that was this past weekend? I was able to get a character to 20 so that you can get the free pet thing, but Diablo 4, I don't know, Diablo for me, uh, and I mostly played Diablo uh diablo 3 i didn't play diablo 2 uh that much i played it a long time ago back in like 2003 or something uh, on someone else's computer because uh i didn't have it myself and then i tried to play it uh, d2 resurrected couldn't really get into it but i think for me the most fun part about diablo is the crazy builds you can do end game so the whole beta of it and just leveling from 1 to 25 or whatever it's a lot slower of a process so in terms of the impressions I don't have too many strong impressions about it. I'm sure once they release the full game, it's going to do like pretty well and the end game's going to be fun. But um, yeah, it just, I guess I am kind of disappointed by the class, the classes they had at release. I'm really hoping at launch Diablo has a six class for us because Diablo 3 had six classes on launch and then they slowly rolled out two more classes over expansions and DLC. But having five, four of which seem you know, not melee heavy tank focused that it didn't feel good to me. But yeah. Master Singleton said, have you found an AM3 plus motherboard yet? No. So I, uh, I put out, uh, some, like, I reached out to Hardware Swap as well as some people actually emailed me and commented and stuff in my comments about having AM3 Plus motherboards. Uh, so I'm in the process of getting one, I think. Uh, 
I think I'm going to go with a uh, hardware swap on this one. But yeah, the only thing about... So if you've seen the latest video, I don't think it was just that person's AM3 Plus motherboard. The fact that my friend gave me a motherboard and that one was dead without his knowledge, I just think... And that's not the only dead AM3 Plus motherboard I have. I have some from like previous past builds and stuff too. I don't know. It's just not worth playing with that kind of uh, hardware or I don't think it's worth using those hard that hardware seriously as like a daily driver. For messing around in videos, it's fine. But yeah, um, I, I would say <laughs> stay away from AM3 Plus motherboards if you are trying to build your own actual system to use. Oh, uh, cookie crumbs. How soon do you need one? Yeah, I'm trying to get this video out like sooner, like pretty soon here. So uh, hopefully in a couple of weeks. So um, during LTX, that'll be way too far out. But thank you for the offer. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, a lot of people were offering the motherboards and stuff, which I mean, I just feel bad taking for free. So I'm like, when people are offering it, I'm offering to, you know, pay for shipping and then like fair value for the motherboard. Yeah. That is happening to all retro and vintage electronics. Yeah, uh, it's just, you know, everything has a shelf life. Even if it's not being constantly used, just being in storage could be detrimental depending on if you store it properly or not. Is the Ryzen 5 5600X good to buy right now? Um, Those are going for, what, 160-ish right now? Let's, let's take a look at the browser. I think those are 160. I just checked the other day, but I swear the Ryzen 5s, uh, oh, it's 156. And you can actually get some used ones for 158, or if you get the 5600 non X, they're 140 or 128. So, yeah, those are fine for the price. Um, Intel, I mean, what, what's Intel got for the 12400? Are these still like 160? Yeah, see, 12400F you can get for 160. So, you can go either way, depends on, you know, if you want to go with AMD or Intel, uh, all of them for around the 160 to 140 price point uh, are are good buys in my opinion. It's you don't really have much options other than this. Uh, with the newer gen stuff, you take a pretty big price increase from from here. So, all right, we're just still chilling for a little bit here at the beginning of stream, letting people get their coffees or waters or use the restroom and stuff like that before we start ho hopping into the topics for today. Shane Eslick says, yeah, AM3 is not worth it, especially for gaming. Yeah, for gaming, because uh, this is 2011, 2012, so that's like around the Sandy Bridge time. Uh, i7, 2600s, i5, 2500s. Those, uh, yeah, those are d were definitely really popular options at the time. Chris Gardner says, you got to live alone to sleep to attempt sleeping naked. Wait, I'm trying to, you gotta live alone to sleep to attempt sleeping full naked. Why do you have to live alone? Oh, I guess, yeah, if you sleep full naked and you have roommates, even if you have kids and stuff, I don't know. I think some people are, um, some families rather, not some people, some families are more comfortable with being completely naked, which I guess there's nothing wrong with it, right? Like if your kid sees you fully naked, uh, but I I don't know. Uh, is that something that I want to become normal and ingrained into my kids one day? Uh, and does it matter if it's like my son versus my daughter seeing me completely naked? I don't know, man. I I'm going to just stick to wearing my boxers to sleep. <laughs> KL130 says, memories I wish I could not remember. Okay, here's the thing, too. So whether or not you are comfortable with seeing... Or with your kids seeing you naked, right? Assuming you have like kids or whatever. Um, you, thinking back to when you were a child, were you okay with seeing your parents fully naked? Or did you want to see that? Or do you want to erase that memory from, you, you know, from your head? Because that's also a pretty uh, a good point to bring up. Like just because you're comfortable having everything out doesn't mean everyone else is comfortable seeing it. King Edzor says, what's the website I can sell PC parts on? Well, there you got a couple of options. You got Jawa.gg, which if it's going to load up, you can sell on Jawa. 
You can sell on eBay. Uh, you can sell on... I like... Personally, for local stuff, off ropes my go-to. But... Facebook Marketplace... Can I look at... Mar yeah, I can look at Marketplace stuff. Uh, but for local stuff, Facebook Marketplace and OfferUp are like the top two in my area. But if you want online, eBay, Jawa. eBay is just like if you want to reach the biggest audience. Uh, but Jawa is if you want to reach specifically other PC gamers uh, and PC enthusiasts and users. Uh, but yeah, plenty of options of where to sell. Oh, and then there's like Reddit Hardware Swap. So Reddit Hardware Swap is a little bit more work to do though. You gotta like put, make a post specifically. You gotta take pictures with timestamps uh, and put your name on it with the date and stuff like that. So yeah. Cookie Crumb says, are there any old platforms you don't have that you wish you had to play with? Um, not off the top of my head. It just depends on, like, if I come across something that I'm like, oh, that seems interesting. Though, So the thing about uh, some of these older platforms or just older hardware in general is, well, it, what I like to do is to see how they perform in, like, the modern setting, right? Because uh, obviously, if you play games from around the time frame that those came out, it's going to be able to run it because that's what's expected it was designed for that time frame but i like taking the old hardware and trying to shove like you know 2022 2023 triple a title games at it and try to be pleasantly surprised and the issue with when you go to really old platforms and hardware is that it's just not compatible um it just doesn't have like uh either like the direct x support or just like enough threads or cores things like that so um but off the top of my head uh I can't think of any platforms really that I do not have access to. Most of it could easily be kind of be easily bought. Um, Intel side is really easy because you can just buy like Dell Optiplexes, uh, which are really great value because of how cheap they are. AMD side is a little bit harder because they retain their value. Master thing is on Newegg, they still have some AM3 Plus motherboards for sale. Wait, seriously? All right, this is the last thing, and then we're going to start getting into the Linus hacking thing, uh, discussing that. Uh, okay, new egg. So AM3 plus motherboard, like brand new. I guess they they kept on making AMD or AM3 plus motherboards used like new, refurbished, refurbished. Like who is paying $240 for uh, a <sighs> 970 chipset? AM3 Plus motherboard. What's the cheapest one? We're going to do our favorite thing, sort by lowest price. Um, So, let's see. Uh, So, they do have some... Re so, they're all... Refer Where's the new ones? I, I don't know, man. Refurbished boards. I'm, I'm starting to find them to be pretty, like, questionable. Uh, And if you want an overclockable one, too, you would want, like, a 970 or 990FX. Uh, or FA. So, yeah, look how quickly the price jumps up, especially if you want to buy a new board still, which I guess is kind of unreasonable to expect. Uh, you can find them, but look at the prices here. You shouldn't be buying this, like, in 2023. Especially since... Let's, let's just take a look at... Like, I want, I want to actually do the 8350, but I might have to settle with the 8320. Like, how much these cost? If you go to FX8350, brand new, sort by lowest, or not brand new, but just sort by lowest price. I hate these listings that have multiple things because they say 49 to 80 bucks, and obviously it's going to be the 8300 that's the cheap one. But yeah, so if you cheap, choose this, the FX8300, that one's 50 bucks. But the 8350 is going for no less than 80 bucks. Like you can keep scrolling down. Oh, this one's 53. This one's actually not bad. In like new condition, how can a processor that's has 2000 it has 2011 stamped on it in like new condition you have no idea if this is in like new condition huh i mean for 50 bucks please you're better off going with an i3 like 10th gen or something
it's it's so ex- I mean this isn't this isn't uh this isn't exclusive to AM3 Plus. Like older hardware, if you're trying to buy from a lot of these places like eBay and um Amazon and stuff like that, older hardware just has like that price floor that it's never going to get really below. All this stuff even though it's I'm not going to call it crap, but I'm going to call it getting to the point where it's almost obsolete. Uh, this one's actually, 8350 is pretty far from being obsolete, though. You can probably game on this thing for a while. But, um, it, there's no way, compared to, like, newer stuff, it should be worth this much. But, if you're trying to find stuff this old, you have to look at stuff like Hardware Swap, OfferUp, or Facebook Marketplace, where people will sometimes charge more reasonable amounts for it. Going to these mega websites like eBay and, and Newegg and stuff like that, you're just gonna be met with, like, what is this? Uh, a, a 760 chipset for 120 bucks. Get out of here. Bro. Chris, you gave away an 8350? I would have paid you for that. When was this? Zach B says, I have an 8350 I'm not using, should work. Been an old PC that isn't used. Yeah, so that's funny because I, so a lot of the people that have reached out to me or like the responses I've gotten on Hardware Swap, they say they have like these processors or motherboards. The issue is they can't confirm if it works or not. They just said it should work. It, it worked last I used it. But like I'm trying to get hard confirmation on whether or not hardware works before I buy it or accept it because... Just like the mother, like I'm saying, the motherboard that I showed at the beginning of the video this past weekend, it was supposedly in working condition, and my friend has no reason to try to like give me dead hardware, and it just was not working at all. So old hardware, yeah, I, I definitely like. That's why when I went to go uh, meet up with the offer up seller, I, I was fully trying to test that board because I'm not gonna walk away with a dead part, and you know, and I didn't. Oh, that was like a year ago? Dang, yeah. Um, I'm actually trying to collect some of those and never sell them just so I can have them on hand for future use. Uh, but the only thing is you have to take care of it. Because like with those chips, it's really easy to like play around with them and overclock. But that could either kill the BRMs on the motherboard pretty easily, since from that era, some of them had questionable cooling. And then the chips itself, like they, they're not very tolerant to, to heat. Uh, I think most of the the FX, like 8350, 6300, <laughs> their TJ Maxx is like 60 or 70 degrees C, which is like ridiculous to think compared to modern chips that are, you know, are okay up to 90 to 100. It's just like a different like time frame. Yeah, Zach B., uh, I will for sure reimburse you on the shipping. If you look in the description, um, my PO, not the PO box, but I got a, U, U, what's it called? The, uh, the address on there. Is it not in the streams? Oh, it is. Yeah. So the new mailing address, uh, the Mukotio Speedway suits Sweet C1. If you send the 8350 to that, I will... Uh, depends on when I get it, but I may be able to open it on stream, but also include your PayPal or whatever, and I will pay for the shipping and all that stuff, so. Overclocked on text says, Gigabyte request, for, yeah, 70.6, <laughs> but AMD is known to lie. I mean, once, once I get one of them in and play with it, we'll, uh, we'll see. We'll see, uh, how the temps actually look before it's throttles and stuff like that why are we looking at new am3 plus motherboards oh uh was just taking a look because someone had mentioned that new egg still sells them and i was basically saying it's definitely not worth the money uh it, they do have used ones so we look at used and refurbished um what can we see here i would want do they have chip can i like sort by chipset uh here we go 970 uh and then 990X and 990FX. If we try to look for the cheapest ones here, you know, to be able to decently overclock uh, the eight core CPUs, then... 
Some of them, I guess some of them do go as low as like 70 bucks, but I'm not trying to buy anything from China, dude. If there's anything wrong with these boards, China return these? Yeah, screw, no way. They're all coming from China, actually, for the lower cost ones. China, China on all of these. Okay, so enough about talking about sleeping naked and stuff like that. So I'm going to end the poll. The end result is 60%-ish about of people uh, sleep with either PJs or some type of like shorts and shirt or like type of combo. About a third of the people sleep in their underwear. I, I'm split between the underwear and PJs type of sleeping. And then fully naked is less than 10%. Yeah. I'm trying to think of if I have ever slept completely naked in my entire life, and I cannot think of uh, a time where I did that. Actually, yeah, if, if it's a ninety-five ninety, that would even make for that would make for a fun video too. Though, whatever motherboard I get in it, I probably will be limited to how much I could overclock it, uh, because yeah, the ninety-five nineties, that's gonna be hot. Yeah, for, for, for sure. If you don't have a use for it, you can send it to the address that's in the description. Leave your PayPal email and how much it costs to ship. I, I will, I will you know, fully reimburse that. Um, and I can throw in something on top for the chip too. <laughs> Rolly Noli says, if you live in a place where winter, where it's winter for seven months, sleeping without clothes on is not an option for sure. Okay, so Linus uh, getting hacked. Um, I'm try I'm curious to hear your guys' opinions on it because I I've seen several different angles about this and being a tech content creator myself, uh, I, I kind of more of sided with Linus in terms of like, oh, uh, that's kind of like a person, like a reasonable thing to have happened. And, but a lot of people I've seen, uh, because, you know, Linus has his fair share of haters, right? That no matter what he does, they're going to hate on him. So they took this as an opportunity saying he is... Oh, I saw the worst take on Twitter, actually. Let me bring that one up. Uh, that one, that would be a fun one to talk about. But, um, yeah. Um, I, I don't blame Linus being a content creator myself because if, you, if you're not aware, the way that they shared that they got hacked was uh, one of their employees uh, that opened up a sponsor, what looked to be like a real sponsorship email, uh, there was a what looked to be a PDF file in there that was actually an executable. And when they accidentally opened that, uh, it basically hijacked their, was it their uh, session cookies? And I don't, I'm, I'm trying to think of like, was all this had, all this had to be done automatically from the hacker side of things, or could they have, uh, or they have had to do everything manually to be able to go in and do everything that they did in a relatively short amount of time, right? Uh, changing the channel name, putting the stream up, uh, either unlisting or uh, deleting all the videos, not doing it only to one channel, but to multiple channels. It seems like that would have been like a like a, a script that did everything automatically super fast, but... Um... <laughs> Yeah, he said they were in really fast, but um, I think, so I wanted to show you some, actually, some emails that I get as a small content creator. So Linus has, what, 15 million? I'm a little, I'm a little bit over a quarter million. So he has uh, times four, times 15. He is like 60 times as big as me, but I'm also a one-person entity. Like, I do everything for my channel. He has like, what, 100 plus employees or something like that. So on, in terms of a scale thing, Linus is like way bigger than me, right? So I get a bunch of weird emails and uh, sketchy looking sponsorship emails and stuff. I What he gets and what his team gets must be magnified, not only just like a hundred times, but thousand fold. So, um, let me, let me bring up that Twitter take though. I need to log in real quick. It, 
I, I'm pretty sure if any of you are on Twitter, you must have seen it too, where it was someone complaining how Linus was greedy, um, which I was like, wait, what? Just because he's sponsored a video? I'm not sure how many people would agree with that. So I'd be curious to run a poll. Uh, but let me see. Budget. Let me pull up my Twitter real quick and get that set up. Ah. Oh. Uh, where is Twitter? Okay, there it is. Okay, we're gonna do dark. Here we go. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, this is greedy bully. He tries to make money on everything. It's not like he has 100 plus people that need to get paid or whatever. Shame on him for trying to find a good consistent income. Yeah. Uh, where is that one? I think I found it because Craft Computing was interacting with this person. And uh, Craft Computing actually followed them. So, uh, where was it? Come on. Uh, here we go, Ron's computer video, which it's unfortunate that this is also like a content creator, but so Ron's computer video put out a tweet. I don't know if they were just trying to fish for engagement or what, but come on. Jeez, this person, man, some people use Twitter way more than I do. <laughs> like, I'm trying to find it. I could have sworn it wasn't even that long ago when they put the tweet out. Oh my goodness. How many, like, this is only a couple of days ago, and how long have I been, have I been scrolling for? Some people retweet and post. Yeah, this is actually mostly just retweeting. Jeez. No, I don't think he deleted the tweet. No way he deleted it. Uh, oh, here it is. March 24th. That was only, oh, that was five days ago. So, Ron's Computer Videos, who has, like, a YouTube channel themselves, literally 14 damn seconds into the video about how their blind greed and lack of basic knowledge and of high, IT hygiene completely bit them on the ass. There's an ad. It's not a tech channel. It's an ad revenue funnel disguised as a tech channel. Uh, so, I would say one of a pretty bad take from... If you watch this, uh, Ron's videos, though, I would not have thought that they would have had this take or opinion uh on it like this person had i not seen this tweet when i checked out their channel and stuff like that they seem like a completely reasonable normal person uh i mean they could still be normal Th that's the thing about twitter though right like i think a lot of the times, and I've seen this behavior not only from, like, this example, but I've seen behavior where people seem more angry or more agitated or more brash and, like, quote-unquote mean and stuff on Twitter than they are in videos and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, Pico Ups, that's a very good point, and that's something I've definitely seen over the years of my use on Twitter, which, again... If you guys see my Twitter account, I barely, like, I don't do much. I sometimes post, like, hey, I have a new video up and some other random stuff. But I definitely don't use Twitter as much as some of these other people do. But from what I've seen, uh, and there's other big content creators that I've already named in the past, that, like, their whole personality on Twitter just seems so much more, like, negative or toxic compared to, you know, the videos that they put out and meeting them in real life in person. It's just, like... I don't know what it is about Twitter. There's definitely something that's lost in translation due to text, but yeah. Shauner says, Twitter is a cesspool. 
Twitter, okay, I've heard this not only about Twitter, but also about, um, but also about Reddit, which is strange because I think Twitter and Reddit, while they are known for being cesspools and stuff like that, they also have a lot of good in them. There are a lot of good interactions and discussions and commentary taking place on these platforms, but, uh, you know... It's the negativity and stuff that shines through compared to all the positive. Uh, like, I... Twitter has definitely changed since Elon bought it. Especially the For You page. Have you guys seen that? Can I look at the For You page right now? Uh, for me. Okay, so For You... Uh, let me see if I scroll through. So a bunch of tech stuff. Uh, some creator clash. Because this is due to the boxing stuff I look at. Uh... <laughs> this one's actually a pretty funny video. <laughs> he kicks the ball through the legs and then they put him right back in the cell. <laughs> I don't know the context of it, but so it's pretty Mimi stuff, hardware and boxes on here. Okay, so now when I'm on stream, none of the political BS pops through and it's all tech stuff. But I do get a lot of like really like extremist political takes on my For You. Just not right now though, for whatever reason. <laughs> When I want to show an example of it, of course, live on stream, it's going to show all the tech stuff. Uh, okay, very cool, very cool. But, yeah, the whole Twitter experience with what Elon's planning on doing uh, with the subscriptions and stuff, I'm not really down for it, but it's whatever. Yeah, people do get more heated on social media, for sure. Um, I, yeah, I don't know why. Like, why can't people just be nice? Like... I I see when people ask like, you know, really noobish or beginner questions on some of these platforms and some people have to go in there and try to gatekeep or try to be like know-it-alls and like I'm way smarter than you type of mentality and attitude. It just makes no sense to me. Yeah, that's true though. The algorithm has found a way to uh, bait engagement. Yeah, so let's take a look at this example. Uh, actually, dang it. I got away from the tweet. It was March 24th. Got to scroll through all this again. Like how many, if we look at the views and stuff it got, let's see relative to like what they normally get, right? Um, the issue is that they retweet so much stuff that half of this stuff is not even theirs. There, a hundred, look at this. 137,000 uh, views. 240 people liked it though interestingly enough but if you look at the like the comment to like ratio i'm not sure if i would say this is a ratio but this is pretty big uh here's the like his normal thing normally gets like 2,000 views 600 views uh 700 views and then boom linus con like calling out linus 137k Uh, Shanghai Chengdu. No, 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 no. Linus got hacked last week, like on Thursday morning. I'm just talking about it now because it happened right after last week's stream, so I have not had to, a chance to talk about it yet. But I was just trying to get people's uh, opinions on whether or not they think Linus, like, it was was it a complete lack of oversight from Linus? Was Linus being hacked? his own fault yes or no i'm just gonna ask this question posing it out to there for me i don't think it's his fault people might blame poor lack like lack of training of his staff being cheap and not like you know having the right infrastructure in place to protect his company uh but i don't think it's linus's fault at all like you we have seen like uh Cybercrime and hacks and stuff happen to way bigger entities than Linus, right? We're talking like banks and stuff with uh, like their databases, usernames, passwords, all that stuff hacked. And Linus is, I mean, he's the biggest tech channel of all time, but compared to some of these other like uh, big banks or Fortune 500 companies and stuff like that, he's kind of small fry. So nobody is immune to these types of attacks, even if you are a tech channel. Uh, that, you know, make brings in millions of dollars and stuff like that. Even Jim Browning got hacked. No one is safe. 
Master Singleton says, thanks for sharing your impartial thoughts. Well, so what I'm going to do here in a second is uh, bring up some of the emails that I personally get. Because like I said, uh, and Linus even said it himself, it wasn't like him or it didn't seem like it was anyone from the core member of the team. Uh, it might, it was someone who may have been more on like the accounting or sponsorship type of side of things that may not be as quote unquote tech savvy. But even then, I will admit that I have clicked on some things that a lot of people may have been say they would have said it was questionable, but um, I have not been hacked, thankfully. Pika Web says the Tesla Elon scam stream, which I have seen it happen on multiple other channels before, is one of the better uh, options if you're the victim of a post hack scenario law. Imagine if they siphon all the money out of LMG's bank accounts or something. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I guess I'm. So I wonder if the Google AdSense could have been hit as well. The thing is, you would think that. In this day and age, you should be able to track stuff like that down to like uh, arrest whoever did it. Because I'm not like a serial hacker or like super well uh, versed in how they go about doing this. But let's say they got Linus's account information and they get into your Google AdSense account because they were able to get into all it. What it seems like is all their uh, YouTube channels are linked to like one uh, YouTube account. Or not YouTube account, but one like Google account, uh, because they were able to access all of them, all the different side channels as well. So that makes me think like, oh, would that mean that they can get into Google AdSense? And if they did, could they have taken money out? I don't think so, because you would have had to confirm like your bank information with like a fake transfer of a certain amount or something to set up like direct wiring. So. Um, yeah, at least nothing of like monetary value was directly taken. Yeah, they lost views and money. Yeah, in terms of how much, I'm curious if they will ever actually disclose it. Um, like in terms of like a uh, percentage of revenue loss, you know, for like their annual uh, like gross revenue or just a, a, like a set dollar amount of estimate how much they lost. Unless they already did that. I didn't watch the full WAN show uh, at all, so. That's so interesting, though. Workspace account that had channel access. Being a one-person entity myself, I am i don't know if I would... He obviously has to do it because he's like a full business with 100 employees, but um, having almost everyone have access to the channel, what if you get have like a rogue employee or something that decides to want to do something like this? Not even like a hack scenario. But you know, sometimes you get disgruntled employees they, and they have the keys to the castle. They, If they leave on a bad note or whatever, they could do stuff like that as well. But um, I bet with vote plane subs, LTT made money on this. Well, no. So I didn't Linus quote 5,000 people subscribing to float plane, but what's the float plane? Uh, how much is float plane for? 5,000 times I'm good was it like five bucks? How much is it to subscribe to five dollars a month or fifty dollars a year? So yeah, even I thought he quoted 5,000 people joining float plane unless I got that number wrong, but that would be 5,000 times 5 bucks is 25,000. And I, I guess there is no rev split for them, right? So 25,000. Yeah, yeah. So I guess from for playing alone, and then there's the D brand sponsorship, which uh, who knows how much D brand pays them per uh, ad segment. So. Yeah, that's true. Uh, you we like if you look at Linus got hacked. So you have all the tech media people uh, reporting on it, but I think uh, so. There's more tech. The quartering kind of reports on tech. A, there's me, 
<laughs> just typing in Linus got hacked, I show up on Incognito. Some ordinary gamers is very, you know, on top of covering uh, just general news in the, like, YouTube space. So he got some coverage there. So, yeah, they did get a lot of, uh, like, press, I guess, whether or not it was good or bad. Um, as well as people making YouTube shorts. Here's UFD text. You YouTube short getting s almost 700,000 views in under a week. That's crazy. So yeah, they, they probably got, I wonder if they looked at their like subscriber graph, if they got a big spike due to this. Yeah, definitely. The community rallied behind Linus on this. Uh, they definitely like are in full, a lot of them are in full support despite, you know, a couple of these people uh, complaining about it. It's going through the tweets is really interesting. Like, so this guy, I don't, so he seems like he, you know, his background is in IT and stuff. So he, he makes computer videos and stuff. He has craft computing, responding, ex exactly what most people think, right? When you have 100 employees, I think you're allowed to ensure revenue keeps flowing even when disasters cause the workflow to stop. Uh, and then he, no matter like who was responding to this, this guy, he has a lot of time to spend on Twitter because, um, he responded to almost every single, look at this. He responded to almost every single person who was telling him that he had a bad take. You don't often see this on Twitter because most people don't have this much time, but, uh, he was definitely thriving off the attention of this. KLC Ken says, there's no doubt this was fake. You mean like the hack was fake or what was fake? Or are you saying this tweet was fake outrage? What are you saying was fake? Uh, so don't watch, okay? Yeah, this guy seems very, like, honestly, my cybersecurity knowledge is, like, zero to none. Uh, he's saying it's basically a confidence-based email hack that's been going around since the early 2000s. So he's really trying to, like, uh, downplay, like, not Linus and his team's knowledge and basically saying he's they got hacked by one of the dumbest things that's been around for, you know, over 20 years. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, just a very salty person in general, it seems like. But if you were to watch his videos, you would have never gotten this from the videos itself. I'm smarter than all you stupid people. Okay, please follow my YouTube exactly. Yeah, I don't know how this would have, uh, how, how this affected this person's channel. Uh, but okay, let me see if I can pull up. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it, it could have been a lot worse. I think one of the, the things about Linus uh, being as big as he is and being the biggest like PC specific uh, channel is that YouTube support is really good. Like, they, their representatives from YouTube was was helping them pretty, not, I wouldn't say on the clock, but they got back to them way faster than they would for smaller creators or even medium-sized creators like myself. If my YouTube channel got hacked, oh man, wouldn't that be, uh, <laughs> wouldn't that be a fun video to make? Trying to purposefully get hacked and how fast YouTube would be to recover. So I've seen other channels that are medium sized get hacked and when they get restored, it is not to the same lengths as they restored Linus's. So if you go to uh, Linus's channel, this is something that like, every time I look at something like this, I look at it from the perspective of like a normal PC user as well as uh, like a content creator. But if you look at like their channel, right? Uh, and we go to, at the time, there was like no videos up anymore when they deleted and removed them all. So if, uh, this one, let's go back to something that was like two weeks ago before the hack even happened. If you look at the descriptions, all this is like still here. 
And if you look at the comments, all the comments are still here. They when they like they fully restored Linus's channel, which is pretty awesome. But I've seen other channels that get hacked and they do not have or maybe maybe YouTube has changed the way that they have restored it. But in the past when I've seen other not as big channels get hacked, they lose all of their descriptions. They lose all their comments. So I think Linus got really lucky because they were able to preserve you know, the important parts of a video aside from just the video itself. But the description and like uh, the timeline, uh, what's it called? Uh, the, the uh, yeah, the timestamps rather. And all the comments from people are, are fully restored too, so. Okay, I think we got a conspiracy theorist in the chat here. I'm not a Linus hater. He's smart, but this is going to be proven as a stunt. He will publicly announce it. Watch. You think this is like a video that they made as a publicity stunt? Uh, I mean, that I wouldn't say that's out of the realm of possibility, but I would say it's like a point zero 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 one percent chance that I would think that would be the case. Yeah, if that was a stunt, that would be a bad stunt uh, on Linus's part because the community would not take well to that. I don't, dude, here's the thing though, a lot, so this is one of the, the most common points that people have been making. Training could have potentially avoided this. No, I mean, I think even with all the training and all the security in the world, stuff like this could slip through. People are human. Even if you have put the training in place, which I'm sure he has some type of training, right? It's not like he just lets people, all right, you guys can just have the keys to the castle, you know, uh, access to the YouTube channel. And uh, on your first day, start handling emails from sponsors without any type of training in place. Uh, now, the training may not have been up to par for this specific type of hack. But even after that, uh, even after training like that, I feel like people, just humans being human, making mistakes. We make mistakes every single day for a number of reasons. Uh, I think someone could still accidentally click on that. And within the span of, like they said, 30 seconds or so, uh, the session cookies could have been swiped and all that could, damage could have been done. <laughs> Even Linus watches porn. Stuff happens, lol. Wow. Yeah, he is... He is taking blame because, exactly, yeah, you don't put blame on other people under you. Um, you just take the blame, improve, and move forward. Okay, now speaking of, it was a sponsored email that looked entirely normal. Even with training, there isn't much you can do. So, speaking of which, I wanted to take a look at, I, I went through my email and pulled up some pictures, and uh, I'm going to show you some of, I had sketchier looking emails, but I didn't, there was too much information in them that I did not want to share publicly just for the sake of the company itself. Uh, and it had to do with like my, you know, negotiations with them. So uh, here is, let me double check to make sure there's nothing in here. Uh, okay. I don't think there's any kind of information, but um, here's, here's one of the emails that we can take a look at. Uh, this was kind of a recent one too. So this is an actual email from a sponsor uh, that when you look at it, so one of the things about a lot of sponsors is that a lot of them are overseas uh, and some of the people working at these companies, English isn't their primary language. So trying to write off bad grammar and spelling and stuff like that, uh, I don't think that, like, I don't think people who haven't dealt with some of these sponsors understand that a lot of these legitimate sponsors can look fake due to the way that they interact and just different cultural norms. Like people, the way that they greet, 
uh, in emails in like an Asian country would do it completely different to how we would do it in the US. So this was a legit sponsor email. And the one that I want to point out from here is that they were sending over a pro like a contract, you know, for uh, for a video and just signing it so that, you know, make sure I deliver what I need to deliver and they pay me what I need to get paid. Uh, if I can move this though, where is it at? Yeah, if I can move this though, if you look at the attachment down here though, they just they just sent a contract. So the way the contracts can work out, they could do docu signs. Uh, they could do I think in terms of like official legit contracts, docu sign is probably one of the most legit ones. Um, but like for this one, they just sent it via a I guess it was a Word document, but I would open it in Google Docs because I don't have Office on my my computer, but. Um, yeah, they just sent the contract just via an attachment like this, not like an official like uh, DocuSign or something like that. So, um, uh, this one is not as bad though. I'm gonna open a, cu a couple of other ones from uh, like here's another one. So this one. I don't even care. I'll, I'll I'll share their name and stuff. So this is what we were talking about earlier in chat. I'm not sure. Do do many of you out there get? Have you received emails from like QQ.com? I'm gonna start another poll on this one because ever since I started the YouTube channel, I get a ton of these QQ.com emails, um, which only after I looked it up did I find out. Oh, that was like a. And then Jason was talking about earlier in chat. It is like a popular email platform in China where you don't actually get a screen name. You get random numbers. So let me start a poll. Yeah. So yeah, QQ is legit. Like 99% of Chinese users have one. But if, and here's the thing, this, this is actually a legit sponsorship. I never actually worked with them because they're trying to like, you know, do products that aren't really related to my channel. But this person has been emailing me trying to get me to do a bunch of like sponsorships or reviews and stuff uh, for like for this one. What was this a phone? Uh, yeah, it's flagship phone from this this company, but um, yeah, th this is completely legit. Even though they, I'm pretty sure this person and this company is based uh, somewhere in Asia, but look at the way that this is written, dear friend. Does this not scream not like Nigerian print scam to you at all? Um, the thing, like, they don't provide any links, but even if they did provide a link, that would be kind of sus or sketch to click on it. They don't sign off with, like, their name down here, with the position of the company that they're in, their company's website, nothing. This is just a text-based email, but I am 100% sure this is not a scammer. I'm 100% sure this is a legitimate, like, if I responded... They could send me the phone and we could do like either a review or sponsor or something like that. <laughs> Kevin Go says, dear friend, eco scam for me. So here was one. Let me see if I can find another one. Uh, here's a different email. So this one is for the T-Ho Smart Lock. Never heard of that before. This is from James who also, again has a random number at qqme.com. This one is a little bit better, but uh, they do post like the actual product itself, which I mean, I guess scammers can still do. Uh, they can provide a, look at this. They don't capitalize at the beginning of sentences. Uh, Hi, my name is James, uncapitalized from t uh, Let's see. Like if you were to look at this, do you automatically assume this is a scam email or do you think it's legit? Net guy John says, send it to me. I review everything. Yeah, John does review everything. If you want, if you just love watching random products and random reviews, um, definitely check out John. Which John, by the way, I'm not sure if I've talked to you about this, but have you heard of Freaking Reviews? So F Freaking Reviews is this guy. I I like to watch him for a lot of the random products that he reviews. 
Like, I don't know why. Maybe it's the sunglasses. You must have seen this channel before. Because he does very chill reviews of random products. But um, that just... that. I see a lot of like correlation between your channel and and his channel, and I, I love the name of this freaking reviews. Yeah, very very cool stuff. He does very like like very consumer friendly, uh, you know, uh, first impressions and thoughts and stuff like that. If you guys haven't seen this, definitely check him out. Great channel here. Um, also, John's channel too. The Net Guy, check his stuff out too. He caters more to the tech side of things. So if you like tech stuff. The net guy. Check out John, who is local to me. Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, lots of diff different uh, tech gadgets. Wise cams, some of my favorites. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, if you look at this email, the Tiho Smart Lock. John, have you heard of this thing? But Justin Alexander says, I don't receive sponsor emails, so I have no idea if they look legit or not. Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, I mean, for this one, I would say this is probably real too. The, the issue is that I wish some of these companies would just get their own like email domains that matches what their website is, like something at tho.com. Even though I think in the Linus's hack, they said that the email extension was legit, right? Like the email extension, it wasn't like a fake or misspelled one or slightly one character off one. It was like the exact email extension as to what that sponsorship or whatever company would have had. Like, I have no idea how people do that, but. <laughs> Tom McLaughlin says, scam Ola, dude. The thing is, it's not, it is big time sus, but it's not always a scam. Let's take another one. Here's Kathy with uh, some Asian characters in front of it. Some random number at QQ.com. Wireless microphone review. Here's the thing too. In Asia, they like to say dear. This is one of many emails that I receive. Uh, give me one second. I just realized I need to check something. Someone's trying to pick something up from OfferUp for me. And OfferUp is bad. Okay. At notification. So I don't always get them. Uh, yeah. So here's another one. Uh... Like, if you were to get this email, and let's say you were you are a mic reviewer and interested in it, would you click on this link that they have for the product, which is supposed to take you to the direct product website to get you the information? If you highlight over it, this is a picture. I took a screenshot because I don't want to be logged into my Gmail live during stream, so I accidentally doxed myself. But um, if you were to highlight this, it would actually tell you the real, uh, uh, you know, link that it's taking you to. And even then, like, could you click it and it still redirects you to something that steals your your information or uh, hijacks your your session cookies, all of that? This one, at least Kathy ended with, you know, have a nice day and signed off as themselves. But, um, hi, dear. I mean, th this is what I see. This is just like a little bit of what I see every single day coming to my uh, email so I you could imagine how crazy it is to sort through stuff on Linus's side of things I'm very curious now if Linus has ever taken a sponsorship or review product from a company that reached out to him with at qq.com do you think if I ask him that on Twitter he'll answer at all yeah I, I would do the exact same thing too Shane it's like uh, the the only issue is though that sometimes, and I've seen this with legit sponsors that are not these sketchy at QQs and stuff like that, but sometimes um, I've had bigger companies like I'm going to use Corsair for example, um, especially for the latest video with their new build kits. Sometimes they send you links for websites that are not fully live or launched yet so you can't just easily google them because it is going to be for a product that hasn't fully launched yet so they have like you know uh just like a preview website setup or something like that for you to see it either that or they give you a pdf which now we're going to be talking about attached pdfs in these emails is and that's what got linus in trouble in the first place yeah okay it was a dot exe and not an actual dot pdf uh extension but still 
Uh, let me let me see if I have any PDF emails where sometimes the extension gets cut off. Let me see. Right click the link and copy the euro into virtual. Yeah, or uh, virus total boom. Um, <laughs> uh, let me see. Do I have any? Oh yeah, here. Uh, if we go back to this first one, let's pretend this one wasn't a PDF because this is a dot what dot doc or dot x doc x uh, link. You can't even really see the extension right here. I guess when you download it, you can see it. But if you were to double click to open it right away, which, you know, you could do by mistake or if you're in a rush or something like that, or you just it, oversight. But like I've, I've received PDFs where the, you know, the, the file name was so long that it actually pushes it out. So you can't fully preview it. So yeah. Generic Ninja says companies can use a third party for advertising. So a lot of companies, they do use third parties, but normally that those third party like companies that interface between influencers and sponsors, they have like, uh, like a legit website and uh, email domain also. So I think it's mostly, I mean, just based on what Jason said, uh, cause Jason actually like lived in China. Um, and uh, Chinese people having dot at qq.com email addresses. I think, it, it, you know, it's just uh, sponsors being in Asia type of thing. It's Chinese work culture. Using your QQ email isn't as sus as we think it is. To them, it's like giving your cell number means you're willing to hear off the clock from them. Uh, does it not? Let me see, actually. Uh, let me look up this qq.com. Uh, let's see. If I were to highlight, uh, not highlight, but if I were to hover my mouse over this right here, which this is an image, but I'm going to go do it right now in my email address. Uh, yeah, hovering over it, it, it does. Yeah, it does pop up the preview of the full. Um, let me see if I can... get a picture of that. Oh, it doesn't let me take a picture with the preview on it. It goes away. Most people are zombie says I actually unsubbed from LTT mostly because of the spam in my feed. Uh, you unsubscribe from wait, really? I mean, I know Linus updates uploads a lot, but you can like kind of cater the notifications and stuff like that. Uh, especially since like if you are sub to a lot of other channels too, I don't think Linus produces enough content to like fully fill up uh, your sub feed or even your front page. I'm not, I have not noticed that. And I am a person who is pretty like, I do not subscribe to a ton of channels. Yeah, and if you don't click them, they do show up less. YouTube and this algorithm. People, like, stop clicking on my videos, so that's why they always tell me, like, I don't see you in my sub and stuff anymore. Or in my feed anymore. Oh, that's what you meant. I knew it was a hack anyways. It was all LTT in my feed when he was hacked. Are you talking about from other channels? Well... If you unsubscribe from LTT, you're still going to get all that news about when Linus was hacked because that's just what YouTube does. If you watch tech in general, you will get a sub feed or a front page feed full of Linus got hacked from other channels as well because that was what was hot in the news at the time. But that's all going to, you know, slowly fade over time as we, you know, get a week, a month, a year after the fact. So, um, okay, let's see. Uh, was there any, that's the last one here. Oh yeah, here's a, <laughs> here's one from, this was from 2021. But another, just only Asian characters, qq.com, dear influencer, like two spaces between here, comma here. We are selling 
We selling smart lighting on Amazon, such as smart bulbs, smart ceiling, smart floor lamps, smart floodlight, smart string lights, etc. If you interesting this item, then we'll send you sample and commission also. They will send a sample and a commission. Look for the cooperation. You just need to know after work with us, you can get money easily. Question. Does this look like a scam? I wish this wasn't that old of an email because we what we could have done was taken the poll and then I actually responded to this person to see if we can get an answer whether or not it's a scam or not. Here, here's if I so where's the poll? So people do not think his Linus is oh wait. Have you ever received an email at from at QQ? 92% of the people have not of all those have voted. So I'm gonna start a poll here. <laughs> Does this look, do you think this can be, this could be a legit company seeking a sponsorship slash review their product? All right, y either yes or no. And here's, so here's the thing for me. I would say, I think this could be legit. This email right here, as basic and badly written as, as it is, if I had to bet money on it, I'm not saying it's 100% legit, but I would say it's, I would lean towards it being more legit than not. Based on what I have seen from sponsor emails in all my time doing YouTube, like this one, I wish, like again, I wish it wasn't this old, 2021. I totally would hit them up just to see if it was real or not, and then unbox the, the product on stream or something and potentially make money at the end of it, right? Like, is QQ the most popular email provider? For products from Asia, I would say yes. But if I'm being reached out to companies from the US, like, you know, legit companies that we all know of, uh, like NZXT, Corsair, uh, uh, Deepcool, things like that, th they all have their own at Corsair.com at NZXT.com. So it's just mostly these Asian companies, sometimes sometimes pretty legit Asian companies too, use this .qq. Yeah, see, and one reason why I would think that this is more, I would lean towards this being real than fake is because they didn't send me a link or anything they didn't send me uh, any sketchy attachments. They're just fielding out like, hey, we have this category of product. Are you interested? You would think that someone, you know, when it comes to the whole scamming industry and the business of scamming and stuff like that, they're trying to put in the least amount of work possible and to get people to, you know, from the, from the get-go, click on stuff accidentally and things like that. This would require someone to actually respond if I were to respond back with them, adding another step to their whole system, making it more like more of a waste of time and more complicated, things like that. Yeah, so <laughs> what the heck? No hates Asians. Where did you get that from? What? I didn't even say anything bad about at QQ.com. <laughs> Most people are zombie says you just need to know after working with us, you can get money easily. Okay. So here's the thing. Sorry. I guess we should specify there is a difference between getting scammed versus getting hacked versus getting not paid for a sponsorship. Right? So from this one, yeah, I, I would agree with you. Say you just need to know after work with us, you can get money easily. This seems to. I, I wouldn't put it past them to try to get me to showcase one of their products and then not pay me after the fact. That would be me getting, what, ripped off or scammed, I guess. But that would not be the equivalent of me getting hacked, right? That's like two completely different animals there. Someone trying to get free marketing and promotions for their, um, you know, crappy Amazon knockoff products is not the same as someone trying to hijack my YouTube channel to, uh, you know, to do other more malicious things.
<laughs> yeah. Good, good. Pico up says, Danny, are you hiding something? Like how you're not actually Asian? That's true. I may not be Asian. This may, this may all have been AI deepfake. Yes, exactly. That is exactly. If you Google it, uh, Shane, that Tencent owns QQ. It's instant messaging software service based in China. They have uh, email. Uh, I guess it looks like they have like an email platform. No different than uh, what's the what's the most really popular? Uh, te was it Telegram? And then there was something else that wasn't just Telegram. It's just like a very popular uh, app or messaging platform that we don't use as much in the U.S. We uh, WeChat, yeah, it, it's just like stuff like that. It seems. Yeah, Line is another one. Yeah, so I'm trying to think. Do I have any of those pop those ones on my phone? I don't think so. WeChat. Nope, no WeChat. Telegram. I do have Telegram. I don't know why I got it. Why do I have Telegram? Yeah. Uh, okay, so I think those were the only example. I mean, there's more examples, but they have too much information on them. Um from from like my own personal collection of kind of sketchy looking sponsor emails. Bakata says Zalo Zalo. I've never heard of that. Like twenty years ago, QQ was massive. It seems like they're still pretty big because I get so many emails from them still. Oh yeah, WhatsApp. That was the one that I was thinking about. WhatsApp, is that huge in India? Or am I thinking of that incorrectly? India and, and like what, Southeast Asia specifically? I don't know why I think that's where WhatsApp is like mostly used. Or like that's like their preferred um, platform. Yeah, <laughs> imagine using Facebook Messenger in twenty twenty three. Yikes! That's what I use. That I I use Facebook Messenger still because not because I want to. It's you know you got those like cousin groups and like sometimes friend groups that just don't want to get with the times and get onto Discord. So then you have to use Facebook Messenger still. South America and India love WhatsApp. Yeah, okay. I thought I had that one uh, correctly. Simon Lee. Oh my god, Land Party Stories. Okay, so the thing about the Land Party Stories video is um, the first one that has to come out is Texas. And I know Jason and Texas crew is waiting for that one. But I keep on mismanaging my time and video schedule where I... <laughs> The thing is, Land Party Stories literally, for the amount of work that is put into it, makes like no money. Like no money on the channel. So many hours put into editing, you know, a Land Party Stories video where it doesn't get a ton of views. And uh, it does have like very niche, like uh, cult following, but it doesn't make like any money, which I'm not all about the money, but if sponsors come up, and want to offer either sponsors or uh, anything like that. I've had to prioritize them over the Land Party Stories video. <laughs> or if like new hardware comes out and I could be one of the first to review it or something due to embargoes and stuff like that, then I'll put it in front of Land Party Stories, unfortunately. <laughs> so I love the Land Party Stories videos, but it... It is a very daunting task not only to edit, but also to try to do on top of all the other stuff normally for the channel. Don't worry. They'll come. And when they come, you're going to be like, you know what? It was hopefully worth the wait. Pico Up says, you see, I thought the big US messenger was iMessage, hence why in America you get culturally discriminated for having an Android. Honestly, well, 
So what is that? What what is Apple's market share in the U.S. versus Android? Is that just a published thing? Apple's iOS takes the second largest market share for operating systems worldwide. It looks like, uh, assuming this is correct at all, I'm like I don't have time to vet my sources at the moment, but we're just gonna assume this is correct. Uh, actually, we probably could ask ChatGPT. Uh, it falls behind Android, which so Android outside of the U.S. And I guess that kind of makes sense. Android is huge outside of the U.S., but in the U.S., iOS led with almost sixty percent market share, and Android with almost the other, uh, the other half. I guess forty percent. You get culturally discriminated for having Apple in most of the world, really? Like, people point out that you're an American or from the U.S. if you have Apple in other parts of the world. I mean, if we are if we take these numbers as they are, uh, yeah, Apple barely makes up a quarter of phone OSs worldwide, it looks like. Oh, in China, if you don't have Apple, people think you're poor and shame you. Dude. Oh, my God. I would just uh, give them the middle finger and move on. Also, dude, people can poor shame all they want. It just shows that they're a crappy person. Dude, feel free to poor shame me for driving a busted Toyota Yaris or for, you know, buying generic everything for buying used phones with cracked screens on them so I can get a discount. Honestly, if you're someone who poor shames or people who poor shame, their opinions don't matter. Like, honestly. Feel free to poor shame just so I can find out how toxic and a piece of crap of a person you are up front and not have to deal with you. Be sure to wear a green cap if you go to Asia. <laughs> what What's with the green cap? <laughs> Shauner says, not going to lie, I get made fun of for having an Android all the time. I'm like the only one in my friend that doesn't have Apple. It's in, yeah, it is in jest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of the times, like, Jason is a, is a troll poor shamer. Mod Jason Whitmer. But he's not super serious about it. Uh, he just, that's like the act that he puts on just for, just for the fun of it. But there are people who actually poor shame for you not having, like, an NVIDIA graphics card, Intel processor, for driving a certain car, for having a certain phone. And it's just like, dude, is your life literally that sad that you care about what other people use when they didn't ask for your opinion on it? <laughs> yes, Jason likes to troll. Wait, what? But, um, yeah. That's why anytime I see, like, elitists, like, who do it not sarcastically... Uh, and they're completely serious about it. And I just like, I roll my eyes so hard. You have the Z Fold. Here's the thing. I don't even know what a Z Fold is. Is that one of the expensive Samsung phones? Samsung Z Fold. That's like super expensive because it folds. Z Fold for how much is this thing? A thousand dollars to twelve hundred? Okay, yeah, I guess they can't force shame you there because this even costs more than some iPhones. <laughs> What's up, Sean? Thanks for not shaming you. Of course, never. Yo, when you want to come up so you can upgrade that PC of yours? And this time, I will remember me saying it on stream that I mentioned upgrading your PC. 
If you want to wait till land or before land, we can do it then. Or if you want to uh, do it before land, just let me know. Okay, for sure. We'll we'll text our Discord or something. A, f a few people in this community poor shamed you for having a Define R5? <gasps> Did they actually poor shame you? Was it in jest or was it actually seriously? I think your R5, uh, you kept it because you wanted all the hard drive base and stuff like that, right? Holden Browser says, okay, uh, poor shame talk aside, uh, let's, let's do some actually just whatever you guys want to do. So someone had a question, any good recommendations on ATX cases with good airflow? Uh, you have to give us a price range, unfortunately, because there's a ton of options, but they range anywhere from, you know, 50 bucks to 200 bucks. And also, are you in the U.S.? So, with, like, a case recommendation, right? It's hard to... G if you're in the U.S., then you can look at, like, Newegg, Amazon, things like that. Um, but if you're in other countries, you may not necessarily have access to Newegg and Amazon. So, the case that can be recommended is definitely depending on where you are located and how much you have to spend. You're looking for a higher end... If you want an ATX high-end case, uh, let's see. We can just browse, actually. It's been a while since we've browsed on stream just, like, components. So let's look at cases, and we will see. So if you look at high-end, for me, high-end, uh, that could, like, that can mean anything. It, do you guys think $100 for a PC case is, like, mid-range, high-end budget? Like, what would you consider mid-range? I, I start to feel like cases are more on the premium side. I wouldn't call them necessarily like high, high end, but they start to get more premium as soon as you hit like that $90 to $100 price point. And then beyond that, you either get like the cases that are fully decked out with like fans and stuff and RGB controllers and hubs and stuff, adding on to the case value. But for the base case itself, I think around the $100 mark is when I start to kind of separate the budget versus more premium stuff. Like, like, Shauner says, 100 is top of mid-range, so it's almost breaking right into the high end, and you say 120 to 150 is high end, right? But, uh, and yeah, I, I would agree with that. I'm saying you could find the same cases with different configurations at both of these price ranges. Like, you could have a case that's base price at 100 bucks, but they also offer it in, like, a fully decked out, like RGB fan config with controllers at 150 and you know you can buy either option uh usually the most base version has either no fans or like one fan in the front or something so yeah but I don't know what this the person who's asking the question uh specifically is asking like what their price range is because that that like that's pretty important like I really like the 4000D it depends on what size you need too this can fit ATX but it's going to be a little bit more compact than uh, some of the other mid towers. Um, if you want, let's see. Let's take a look at what op thermal takes. Like, I mean, there's there's definitely a lot of options. Like, so fractal design meshify two. This one is this really normally one seventy five. Uh, yeah, so this one looks like it comes with, uh, a bunch of, so it's pretty, I, I wouldn't say fully modular, but it definitely has uh, a lot of, like, 
uh, drive sleds and stuff like that. Looks like it is fully outfitted with at least the three front and one rear exhaust fan. Uh, it is from Fractal Design, who kind of just has more exp expensive cases than uh, the other companies in general. Like, would you call this one being priced at... Um, and then... Wait, does it actually come with the... Uh, hinged mesh front, okay. Fits, so... If you want to do like a custom cooler or custom like hardline loop in this, it will have plenty of room for that. Uh, I'm trying to think of what that's a random picture for them to have, uh, like a reservoir in there. Maybe it's just a show. Like it, this. I would say this is pretty in, in the, what I would consider high end based on price alone. But feature set wise, uh, let me look at more of the the product itself. So it does come with fan hubs, okay. Uh, holds up to 11 hard drives. So yeah, when you have more niche capabilities where we're, you know, we're moving to cases that are able to hold less hard drives uh, and have less three and a half and two and a half inch drive uh, carrying capability, the, when you start having stuff like this in your case, you can charge a little bit more of a premium for it because there's no other options that people are really gonna have. The Cooler Master CH370, are you talking about the Deep Cool one? Because I'm actually going to do a build in the Deep Cool CH370. Does Cooler Master have one too? Or did Jason mix the brands? Yeah, so I have a Deep Cool, I have that sitting right behind me. Uh... See, yeah, so I'm going to be doing a build in this one, actually. This is only 75 bucks. Oh, shoot. On Amazon, it's even cheaper. They wanted a high-end case, though, but this case is only 60 bucks. I mean, it's pretty much your standard box case, uh, you know, with front airflow. I think it only comes with one included rear exhaust fan, which for a budget build, uh, you know, you probably aren't going to be dealing with a ton of heat unless you're dealing with used older products. But if you're doing like an i3, you know, RX 6600 build or something in here, you could just run with an exhaust fan and you'll be fine. But 60 bucks, uh, and I think, and you know, it looks, uh, it looks fine. Yeah, so it's pretty pretty clean looking case. Um, yeah, sixty bucks, kind of a crazy value here. Um, but as we go through the more expensive cases, thermal takes. Okay, uh, are you supposed to say this as series or series? One fifty. Oof, what's going on in the front there? Is that just like a gr what is that thing? Metal frame at the front of the case. U unique case body is complemented with some metal elements. Unlike most of the cases are made of plastic only. The texture on this case pushes its appearance to another level. Dude, what is this marketing? Oh, I can see why it's expensive now. I didn't notice it at front. Wait, is there a screen on this? Why is there a screen in this example? There is no screen. What's going on? What is that right there? Why is this part of this example, but not in any other example here? Oh, they charge an extra 100 bucks for it. Okay. But dude, I mean, this one is definitely 150 bucks. Some people may call that higher end. Maybe it's not cool. high end, you know, if you define it as at $200. But um, uh, riser cable. But yeah, what is this? All right. I hope Thermaltake does not reach out with the sponsorship with this case specifically because uh, this is kind of ugly.
Thermal take is weird. BPS Brian did a review of this case. As it looks different. I'll give it that. Inside. Also, wait up. What? What are you guys' thoughts on uh, these hard drive, like these little racks? It's removable, so you can take it off. But let's say for whatever reason, you're still using old two and a half inch drives or, you know, you run out of NVMe slots or whatever, and you're using these. Would you want to show them in the front or would you rather hide them in the back? I guess if you use these T-Force Delta... Uh, RG, uh, what's it called? SSDs. These have like an RGB glow effect to them, but you're also going to have cables running into them, which kind of look ugly uh, when you can just have them hidden in the back and who cares? I guess being on the front side, there could be an argument for airflow because when you have them hidden in the back, like right up, you know, the tray is, there's not like a lot of breathability in the back where all the cable management happens. Having in the front, there could be an argument for keeping the drives cooler and if you do have like aesthetic drives it could be good to be in the front but i don't know this is i would not be interested in this at all it looks like it was designed by jay leno with the bottom chin uh yeah this thing i don't know they're saying it's for aesthetic reasons i think this is ugly honestly demon mitt says i always think they're dumb i get the point in having display mounted spots uh I don't get the point in having display mounting spots for SSDs. Yeah, I mean, that was definitely more popular in, old, you know, if you look back into like five, six, seven, eight years ago. But I feel like for the most part, uh, most companies don't do this anymore. And uh, I'm trying to think now that we're looking at thermal take. Let's see what thermal take cases. I don't think much about thermal take cases, to be honest. And this is their, if you go to thermaltakeusa.com, this is their like pride and joy, what they're showing in the very front when you get in here. Or maybe this is just the news. Right now, this is the, the first thing that hits you in the face though when you get in. Um, so let's take a look at some of their cases because honestly, I do not, I'm trying to think of the last time I built in a thermal take case. It's been a long time. But if you were to look at, let's look at mid towers because I think that's like one of the most popular segments of the market if okay so this is what they have to offer oh my goodness why is this okay civics 1921 says please fart on mic why why are people like this okay so they're like their cases, like their core P3, the ones that people like to mount on walls and stuff. These ones are, they, they look really nice when you get them built out right and have like custom cooling and stuff like that. These ones look really cool. Um, but this is not what the typical user is going to want to buy uh, just because of how heavy, how big it is, how expensive it is. Uh, so if we're going to look at like, the most popular part of the segment, which is like an enclosed, you know, mid tower case. They have the prices on here. So let's take a look at this. Uh, we got some of these. So some of these other ones look, they look kind of normal, but then not. And uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, this one definitely does not look normal. And this one's a more premium case at uh, 180 bucks the tower 500 this is the one that i made fun of for looking like one of those 3d printers that's enclosed <laughs> the, yeah shane eslick the thermal take claw grab machine case this is <laughs> exactly i don't i i wouldn't yeah even if like I was given a case like this for free. I don't know if I would use it, honestly. This is definitely to me very ugly. Though if Thermal Take wanted to sponsor an ad spot and have me read their talking points on a video, I would totally still do it. But I would not lie in the ad spot and say, I love this case. I would just read off the specs because that's as honest I, as I could be for it. Um but yeah, so there's you got this 3D printer looking clog machine case. I'm not a fan of a case like this. It looks definitely looks interesting, but I think some people would complain 
why are they just why not just make the front fully meshed what purpose does having this solid portion of this do they're they're trying to like make it look kind of like geometric and have like angles and stuff like that for the side here also i don't know i don't want to come off like i'm hating on thermal take or something like that because they're not the only company that does this but i mean even corsair has done stuff like this like what is this yeah <laughs> demon mitt says i avoid cases that have those dumb half solid front panels i can't like if you did the the half solid like in like uh a vertical orientation or something like that i guess i wouldn't be questioning it as much but they're definitely trying to make it look different but look at this here you have to consider when they added this portion to it they now made the tempered glass not square uh so it just makes the tempered glass kind of a odd shape with odd bezels other than that though i mean it, it's kind of a square case i don't know to me if this didn't have the thermal take name on it i would think this is like an aero cool or one of those other case companies that are known for having pretty bottom of the barrel like bottom tier cases you'll be doing a v250 tempered glass so Demon Mint is going to be doing a build in this one. Oh, I think, I wonder if this is one of the ones that we pulled up earlier. Let me see. Here's a 200 tempered glass, 200, 200, all these 200, 300s. All right, so you're building in this one too. Okay. Um. So this looks like it's not completely blocked off. There is still some room for ventilation i'm not some people really like the tempered glass front look that's I, I don't really have a problem with that as long as your temperatures are fine and you have those in check that's fine i'm i don't know how i feel about thermal takes curved front here it is definitely not common in uh in case design lax lifters with the super chat. Love the channel. Brings memories of after school hanging out at the computer lab doing Counter Strike land and just talk about PCs all day. Awesome. First of all, thank you for the super chat. And I'm glad uh, that the channel brings you back memories of land parties and just these weekly streams. It's just a place where we come here and we just talk about PC stuff. We talk about whatever we feel like talking about from week to week. Uh, and right now we're talking about these PC cases. But, um,. Yeah, that's a good point, Shane Eslick says. Ther tempered glass is the best dust filter. Uh, Demon Mitt, did, were you sent this one to use, or did you buy it, or get a good deal, or how much did you spend on it if you did spend anything on it? Uh, in ter I mean, there's nothing innately wrong with the case, aside from, how much is this? 80 bucks, and it comes with three tempered, uh, or RGB fans. Okay, so that's perfectly reasonable. Just looking at this, um... I'm not a fan of the curved, you know, these curved uh, edges on the front removable panel, but it, that's a preference thing. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, I'm definitely not a fan, and I don't think this is just a preference thing, of these four thumb screws. Four thumb screw designs through tempered glass. I mean, that I think that should personally be reserved for like the $40, $50 tempered glass, maybe $60 tempered glass cases. But as soon as you start moving closer to the $100 mark, I want to see these thumb screws removed. I want to see like those uh, push pin designs where you have one thumb screw holding it in or maybe a lip on the back with two thumb screws. But I, I'm so over these tempered glass panels with holes drilled into them with the thumb screws going through them. You bought the 250 ARGB brand new for eight, 80 bucks. Okay, so you bought it for how much it's listed for on this. And I mean, for that price, uh, and uh, Demon Mitt is a PC flipper for those of you who do not know. So this one... A lot of people who are going to buy a PC from, like, you know, uh, hit, buy it from him, whether it be online or in the local market, they're just going to, for the most part, care that it's it's got nice, fancy-looking glass, it's got RGB, and it has the PC components they want. Um, but as someone who has built a ton of computers, I'm I'm being personally very nitpicky about some of these things that I want... I just want the trend to move away from in terms of case design. Yeah, hinges, my goodness. 
Hinges, please give me hinges with magnet or push pin so that I don't even have to deal with any thumb screws. What is what is the argument of not having hinges aside from cost of manufacturing? Because I could totally see that being a reason why. But if you're going to talk about not being able to securely put a case or a tempered glass side panel on because the hinges are not as secure as thumb screws. Fine, give us an option to put a thumb screw if you want, but also not have a thumb screw if you only want to use the hinge and the push pin or magnet. Like, I yeah, I don't know. I'm a huge proponent of the hinge design. I talk about it any chance I get if I use a case that has it. But um, it, it seems like the case manufacturers have not really picked up on that uh, the cue yet to do that. Jason Whitmer says, I love magnets or hinges. The four thumb screw screams budget. That's exactly my thoughts. Like, we, I mean, we've had four thumb screws through tempered glass design for a really long time now. If you want to innovate, start putting hinges. Any reviewer looking at your case will point out that it has a hinge design and will praise you for it. Trust me. The View 51 has a hinge, but the thing to keep it closed is a little latch. Yeah, that works too. Let's see. Thermaltake View 51. All right. We're talking about premium cases here earlier, right? This is a dual chamber design. Oh, oh, okay. When did this come out, actually? This is what everyone would call the uh, Height Y60 slash um, Lee and Lee 011 Dynamic copycat, right? As soon as you see this kind of like tapering off motherboard tray with the grommeted holes for cable management and the side intake though this one what's the front looking like it is tempered glass on the front with a gap so that you can still get some airflow but 230 bucks what does this come with with two pre-installed what are these 200 mil yeah 200 millimeters uh, ARGB fans demon met actually put the submission in discord where is it at is it in stream submissions? No, this is from last week. Did you put in the build setup? Let's see if I can find it. The first one? Oh, did you take the fans off the front? You did. Okay. I was looking for RGB fans in the front, so you moved them. Can you use the 200 fans anywhere else? Let's take a look at this. Uh, so what do we got here? So we do have a yellow and black themed build. You did not use the fans at all, it looks like. You just completely removed them. Um, so you do have, I mean, your airflow pattern looks to be either up to down. I can't tell by these pictures. Is there any other angles? Okay, so it looks like you're pulling from the bottom up and you're pulling in from the side, it looks like. Let me see. Yeah, so you're pulling. Intake is from, uh, or you can call it the side or the rear or whatever, uh, as well as from the bottom through the radiator and then up to the top through another radiator is what it looks like. Yes, okay. So you just, you just didn't use those 200 millimeter fans at all in this build. Um... I mean, yeah, th this definitely looks like a nice case. At 230 though? I don't know about that. The shape of this definitely looks more unique. Uh, you see how Thermaltake is doing like kind of like the geometric thing with it? Um, where instead of squaring off everything, you have these little um, like diagonal corners in it so let's see what are some of their other cases this one this looks like a very standard case though they they couldn't just give it a no which is fine they they did some kind of like a raised portion right here of the front mush mesh panel but other than that this uh h570 so 100 bucks ARGB. Ooh. Here's one thing that... This one's a hinge design, so I do like that. I don't understand the white cases with the very big black 
bezels on the tempered glass. Why not just make that white? Because it costs more to do? Because it's harder? I've seen many cases do it. But like, it's not only that this is a white case. Like even all, it looks like, is it all the internals? Oh, except for the, the brackets on for the uh, expansion slots. The brackets are black. But the actual inside, the paint is white. Like the power supply basement, the, the motherboard tray, all that's white. So I think that this... This black uh, bezel completely ruins the look, in my opinion. Shauner says, black accents on what should be all white case really bothers me. Yeah. Okay, Jason. Jason has a really good question, which if you have noticed, why do you put green bezel in your thumbnails, bro? So there was a point in time. Uh, let me see. Does Dave 2D still do it? So... This was, I started doing the green bezel almost since the start of the channel. Like, I think the very first video has green bezels. Let me see, nerd on a budget. So if we look at my first video, it, uh, the, my bezels actually used to be bigger. But yeah, so for since the beginning of time, all my YouTube videos have had green bezels. Here it is, here's the first video right here. You see that green and black border around it? So the reason why I do the green bezel is because I think I saw like a, uh, either a, tw a tweet or something like that where they said, make it so that your thumbnails are distinguishable to you. And this was before I was putting my face in a lot of the thumbnails, right? So before I was putting my face in a lot of it, people would be able to recognize that it's mine because it had the green outline, similar to how Dave 2D used to do his thumbnails. He doesn't do it anymore. So maybe I should stop doing it too. But if you look at Dave 2D videos, let me go back in time. Jeez. When did Dave even stop doing that? Dave is like my one of my tech idols on YouTube. Yeah. So Dave used to do something similar where he used to put this kind of like sidebar on every single thumbnail he had. So Yeah. That's uh, that's kind of why I have the bezel in mind. Is it time to finally remove it? I don't know. Something like that that's been around since the beginning of the channel. Ah, it would kind of be hard to to stop doing. Scott the Waz still does it, lol. Scott the Waz. Scott the Waz. Oh. Hey, yeah, so he does blue border, not in all of the thumbnails, it looks like, but on a lot of them he does. Yeah, so a lot of these do have the blue thumbnails, uh, like borders around it, but some of them don't. Interesting. Yeah, so Kevin goes, says, I kind of like the green bezel as your trademark symbol. Yeah, that's exactly what the point of it was for. Kind of like how Dave 2D's trademark symbol used to be this thing on the side, but uh, he has removed it. Uh, how long ago? Almost two years. Over two years ago, he stopped doing it. Frost says, oh, what did Frost say? Should I post the Marketplace link? Uh, is Frost trying to submit something for us to look at? Where is uh did someone submit to stream submissions? Facebook okay, here we go. Cold frost. So yeah, we're at the point where if you guys I'm just looking at case submission or case recommendations from people uh, who want me to pull it up so we can talk and look at it as a group, as well as someone just had a Facebook marketplace thoughts on this PC for the price and stuff. Are you the seller or are you going to be the buyer? I think that makes a big difference because if you are the seller, I'm going to try to help you get as much profit as possible. But if you are the buyer, I'm trying to help you spend as little as possible, right? So we've got a Ryzen 2600, a GTX 1080, 16 gigabytes of RAM, a B550 motherboard. Interesting, okay. Three terabyte spinning hard drive, NGXT H510 Elite for 380 bucks. Do we have any more pictures? Just one picture on this. Huh. I mean, if we were just to add up the price of things, 
let's just say 40 bucks. Uh, RAM, I guess, is like 30. Uh, B550, uh, this looks like a lower end. Oh my god, that's the Asus Prime A. Those still go for like in the used market, probably like 80 bucks. So this is a hundred, a little bit over a hundred bucks in the RAM and motherboard alone. That graphics card is definitely worth over a hundred bucks. So that's two. We're at like two something, uh, three terabyte hard drive, not worth that much. Maybe like thirty or forty bucks. So we're at what two fifty? H five ten Elite. Uh, it's hard to say because that's a used case. But if you were to buy an H five ten Elite brand new, let's just see what those are. Yeah, used PC cases, it's, it's just such a weird area um, in terms of how much. So the H510 Elite is going for 120 Okay, so let's just say, I mean, honestly, I don't think used cases are, I don't value them too much. So we'll say like 60 bucks there. Uh, and then the Ryzen 2600. So this is not priced uh, too bad, it seems. I think if you're if you're a buyer, given that this is already a fully assembled system, probably has Windows on it, ready to go. Uh, I think three eighty, I think is a perfectly fair price to pay. I mean, for three hundred less than four hundred bucks, you're gonna get a system. The Ryzen twenty six hundred, it's getting a little old, but you can still game on it just fine. The ten eighty, you could definitely still game on the ten eighty. I've shown gaming on worse graphics cards with modern titles. Even some trip ways. You're probably going to be running at medium settings for the most part. Maybe high on some at 1080p. But, I mean, 400 bucks for something that can bring you a lot of hours of enjoyment in PC gaming. That's how I, I'm starting to look at it. Also, where is this? This is in Colorado. Um, yeah, I would say this is a, a perfectly fair price to pick this up at. Hobbs says, in my opinion, PC cases are consumable items. What do you mean by a consumable item in that they are not? So are you talking about with regards to how permanent they are? I mean, I, I think I kind of get where they're coming from that angle. Yeah, I guess it depends on how you look at it, right? So some people look at a PC case as like you buy it once and as long as it's not like a super old PC and they don't change standards like with regards to USB headers and stuff like that, you can use a PC case easily for like a decade. You could get multiple upgrade cycles out of it, etc. Um, so I, I'm curious to hear what Hobbs means by uh, it being consumable because I'm pretty sure Hobbs, he, he knows a lot about PCs and PC building. So uh, I'm pretty sure he has an interesting uh, take on this here. Shauner says, Colorado, I'm going to snipe that and then flip it. Shauner, if you were to take this and do nothing to it, oh, it has ketchup and mustard. Maybe you add extensions for like 20 or 30 bucks. What would you try to flip this as at? Like just based on what you know here. We don't know anything about the power supply, but the power supply does have some value in this market right now. Yeah, I, I didn't even add that into the cost of it. But power supplies, something that is able to, to actually run like a 1080, you're probably dealing with like a 600 watt power supply here, maybe 700. Uh, and those are really expensive. If you take a look on Amazon, you cannot find, I think the cheapest one is the Thermaltake GX2 right now. It's a C tier ketchup and mustard cable, $60 power supply. Use cases are most definitely almost, I wouldn't say impossible, but in most cases, if you were to sell a PC case online, the shipping alone for an empty PC with no parts in it, just the size of a PC case, if you were to ship it across the country or just even down the same coast, you're probably looking at at least, what, 25, if not 30 bucks around there. Uh, to ship it, especially since you're going to want some kind of insurance on it for the tempered glass and all that. So, yeah, used PC cases definitely just sell in like your local market. I would not bother trying to sell it online because people could buy a brand new case for the same amount.
essentially. See, 600 is realistic after cleaning it up. Um, I'm trying to think what what are 1080 is going for right now. I don't want to sign into eBay. I just want to look for GTX 1080s. Are what are they like? I would think like 130 if I had to guess off the top of my head. Uh, for a buy it now in working condition, uh, parts only, pre owned GTX 285. What the heck? Why is this popping up? Uh, I'm going to go to used and seller refurbished and open box. God, eBay, why you do this to me? Okay, so we're still getting 140 bucks is the cheapest buy it now GTX 1080 I can find. And this thing doesn't even have a cooler on it. Oh, it doesn't have any fans? What the heck is this? Okay, we're going to ignore that one. Uh, this one is 141-ish after shipping. So yeah, the, the 1080 is still a very capable card, but it's still... Oh, this has bid or you can buy it out. So yeah, it's still worth around 140, 150 bucks. Probably maybe a little cheaper if you do local listing shopping. Which one's not a 1080? Oh, this one is not. Yeah, good point. Uh, this is a mining card. So this one would be a better TI working board. Oh my God, where's the legit ones? Here we go. One, so 150 for excellent condition, fully functioning, free shipping, but 150 on the card. Which again, for the performance is actually not bad. Name another card that you could buy for 150 bucks from a seller like eBay or not eBay, uh, Newegg or Amazon, right? This is where the used market shines, where you can spend 150 bucks and get this performance and you're not going to be able to get that from Newegg or Amazon. Danny, did you cop any of those cheap CyberPower GPUs from their, it was from their refurbished sale thing that they had. 5700XT and RX 5 cs came in. They were shrink-wrapped. Nice. No, I, I wasn't able to cop it. I didn't see that until like four hours after the fact. And I'm pretty sure all the either all the flippers bought up all the inventory or they didn't have that much to begin with. 5700XT for 150. Yes, so that's another popular option for people who don't mind Team Red. The 5700XTs, which did not... I mean, they were just so... Uh, they were definitely used during the mining boom, so not many people were able to use them like normally. Let's see, we got open box, certified refurbished, seller refurbished, and used. Uh -uh. This is just the heat sink, cooler. So this one's 130 right here. Loud fan, okay. So that one has some issues. So the cheapest loud fan. What the heck? What's up with these listings? Loud fan, 61 degrees. Bad HDMI. So all these 150 listings actually have problem. Or this one's 130. Loud fan, 47 temp. What are they talking about here? Bad HDMI display port works. Loud fan. Is it just saying that not only are the fans loud, it runs at an average of 74 temp? What are they saying? Joel says, I want to get your thoughts on my build. Okay, I'll check it out in the showcase in a second, Joel. Um, but yeah, 5700XT, if you can get... What is this? Good note, loud fan 61. Am I just like not with the lingo right now? Is this a common thing for 5700XTs in general or maybe cards from this generation? Like, does anyone know exactly what they're talking about? I can only guess that they mean that the fans are loud and it runs at 61. I don't even get, how could you say it runs at this temperature when it's going to depend on what configuration you have it in, in terms of surrounding components in case. I am looking at the other listings. They're the same way. Well, not all the other listings, but uh, like this one's a power color card. This one's fine. So 
It look, 150 does look to be the starting point of cards that don't have any issues. Please ask questions before buying. I'm selling this as is with no returns. Wait up. Fully functional, original purchaser of this graphics card. Serve me well. Okay. Something about these eBay listings though. I'm not sure. Like, do you guys ever get sketched out about this? I'm selling as is with no returns. Well, if it's used and in working condition, I don't see why this would be a problem at all. I don't even know. Does eBay, do they side with buyers who have a change of heart and just want to return things for no good reason at all? Yeah, I don't get, you can't just say no returns. If you send me a card and it is not as advertised, eBay is going to side with me. So I don't know if this person is just saying, if, yeah, I don't, what are they trying to enforce here, honestly? <laughs> oh, this is a 5700. This is a non XT. Ooh. I just noticed that. This is a non XT going for 150. So the 57 NXTs are kind of pricey. Why are they showing me? Where's the first non XT? 169, nice. Uh, 150 plus 20 shipping. So yeah. Uh, here's one for 165. Used. Works fine. One fan might need replacement. Jeez, come on, guys. Works good. I mean, yeah, it probably is fine and works good and doesn't overheat. One fine might need replacement. Cheap. Dude, fans are not cheap parts, easy fixes. They're at least 15 to 20 bucks after shipping if you're going to go grab them from AliExpress. Like, if I'm buying a $150 uh, graphics card used, I'm not going to want to have to spend another 20 bucks to replace the fans. <laughs> no zero feedback buyers. What are you going to do? Just cancel the, the listing if someone does buy it as a zero feedback? Yo, sellers are getting, like... <sighs> there, I feel like these some of these others are expecting a lot. They're being a little pushy here. No feedback buyers, yeah. All right, so Joel submitted to the showcase uh, with his... Oh, my goodness. What is this, Joel? What are we looking at here? He has a... <laughs> Let's look at, look at his build real quick. So he does have the deep cool Gamax uh, with the cooler installed upside down, it looks like. Uh, but what do we got here? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. These are all hooked up to the Asus Prime V550 Plus. Or let me see, where's all those drives? Is there an actual picture to the drive? So there's his setup. Very, very clean, nice looking setup. Um, yeah, what, when the case is closed up and uh, the side panel is on, it actually looks like really clean. It's just with the open pictures, I guess, of the progress that he had on it. Yeah, like, look at this. Very clean looking case. Yo, I, dude, I want to see the backside of this thing, though. I do see a ton of things plugged in right here. Oh, there's six drives connected. So yeah, you have like a NAS or some kind of external storage going on, right? But are all the SSDs in the system itself? I want to see a picture with all of these SSDs, assuming they're all in the system and not off to the side. Joe Panico is saying, some sellers are just foolish and do not understand how eBay works. All those remarks are meaningless. Yeah. Uh, you know what's funny? This reminds me of uh, every time I see UPS or FedEx or USPS, people comment on putting fragile stickers. Uh, <laughs> these right here. 
every single time I see, like, if you see this posted or, like, whatever, like, even I've talked about it on videos, like, uh, when I'm reviewing other people's builds or whatever, and it gets it gets sent in boxes to have this on it, I point it out. But then you always get people in the comments responding like, "Yeah, I work for UPS, and we ignore that. We do not care if it says fragile on it. This is this is a waste of time. This is nothing." So it it reminds me of like the whole eBay uh, seller thing where they tell you like, uh, "Don't buy if you're a zero feedback buyer." You can't stop me from doing that. I, I can just do it anyways. Like what you say has has like no power here. Not connected. I just want to list all the SSD in your in your house, bro. Listing all the SSDs in your house, not just for your personal use build. Hey, what's up, Ryan? How you doing? I get a lot of cards with mining vibes on them. Heh. Uh, oh, V bios with mining V bios. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, how? Oh, yeah. We can actually talk about this, which is pretty interesting. So let me see. Sell your gear. Wait, no, no. Where is it at? Where's the buying? Uh, I don't, I want to make sure I'm not sharing any information that is not supposed to be shared right now. Kevin Go, thank you. Oh, don't worry about it. Dude, I'm always, I'm always down to look at Java stuff, Ryan. Uh, with regards to the graphics card buying, because I saw the email on it, but has that been, like, can we find that from the front page? The, 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 in the, oh, I just missed it. Okay. Oh, sell your, oh, it's GPU specifically. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to sell hardware and this is, this is actually pretty smart. This is similar to what, you know, uh, other kind of like, um, kind of, like, I don't want to say pawn shop because that gives it like a bad, like pawn shops kind of in general have a bad reputation, but Jawa would be is willing to buy your graphics card. You can sell, you can list your card for sale, which is really good how they they put this option here. So like if you want to sell and get the most profits for yourself and list it for whatever price you want to, feel free to do that. It's still always an option. But Jawa will specifically buy the card directly from you. So you're not you're not selling to some random buyer on the other side of the country where like they might because the honest truth of it all is even though scams can occur, and I've talked about this so many times by this point, a lot of the times we think of scammers being sellers trying to sell a bad product. But you also have what we call, Jason, what, how would you phrase it if you're still there or anybody else who has sold? Like horrible, there are, there are such things as horrible customers, right? Customers where even if you sold exactly what you said you were selling, they either are tech illiterate or they damage the product because they don't know what they're doing. And then they expect a refund saying it you shipped out a broken product or something, right? So in situation for people who are wary about that, because even me as a seller, I worry about that all the time. I know that I test my computers and they're in good working condition when I sell them. But someone down the line who tells me a week down later, like, oh, there's a problem with it that I didn't run into when I was testing, it could be the part, you know, something died, or it could be that they messed something up and now they want their money back for their mistake. So if you sell your GPU to Jawa, you kind of skip through all of that and they will give you, you know, an offer and for it. And I, I would like to think that they, you know, give, uh, let me see, get an offer. Oh, we could actually take a look at what they're gonna offer. Joe Panico says, hopefully Jawa offers better prices than sell GPU. And DeathX says, we actually offer more than your GPU than the main competition for GPU buyers. Sell GPU. Oh, yeah. So, 
Cell GPU sounds familiar, but let's bring them up too. Okay, let me close all these thermal take tabs. I got, I literally have like 50 tabs in this one incognito window alone. Okay, so let's, let's just take a look. We're just going to do, uh, a, a random, get an instant quote. Oh, is this going to be sent to my email? Oh, okay, so it's not, it's not going to show me a live quote. So let me see if I can get one real quick. Um, we'll, we'll just do 1080, right? Let me zoom in on this a little bit more. So we're going to do a 1080 and we're just going to do an EVGA one because we saw one for around 150 on eBay. So this is, let's just say used with no box. One of them. And then let me change my thing because my email just popped up and I could easily dox myself. Okay. Oh, they do show it to you right here. Let me remove my email. Good thing I did not just do this. Okay. So, Jawa uh, for the 1080 is offering 8225, which I I personally would not sell a card for that low. I would put in the work to try to get more from it. I don't know if I would necessarily be able to get 150 just because 150 is the eBay price. eBay is like the highest price of all. But I would definitely aim for like around the 120 to uh, 1, 120, maybe 130 price range for a 1080 at least. But um, you got to understand that this is just how most like anything of this type of service is going to have to operate, right? They have overhead uh, they have to deal with like listing it, keeping inventory and all of the things like that. And the fact that it's depreciating. So they have to be conservative with it. Now we're going to take a look at Jawa's offer versus sell GPU, which you can sell. Can you buy from them too? Or do they just. Or do you, you just sell it to them? What do they do? Build systems with it? Okay, we got uh, Ava posted. Okay, oh man, we already an hour and 15 into the stream. Let me quickly look through these and then we'll get to Ava's and then we will call it a night. All right, so we were to do the same NVIDIA 1000 series 1080. We're gonna do a EVJ one in used, no box. I'm going to have to go away. Why is YouTube incognito auto-populating my emails? <laughs> Trying to dox my personal email address. Okay. So, is my email on here? Uh, okay. So, here is what Cell GPU is offering for a... GTX 1080 in working condition with no box. They are offering 72 bucks. So Java is offering 10 bucks more than them, which 10 over 80, what is that? 12, uh, yeah, that's like 12.5% more than what they're offering. Oh, okay, you roughly offer 10% or so more than sell GPU. Yeah, so. If you are a penny pincher or if you are quote unquote like a pc flipper or you know this is definitely not a service that's catered to you just because you're trying to maximize every dollar you can get in your pc flipping or your selling or whatever but i have run into a surprisingly alarming amount of people who are not trying to maximize what they're getting for the graphics card they just want to get rid of it and get something in return i mean most of you probably, if you're, if you're in the market of flipping, you have run into people like that. That's how you get really good deals in the used market. You're buying it from someone who could have gotten more money from it, but they don't want to deal with the time and effort and waiting for someone to come along to pay that top dollar. They're just willing to sell it at a pretty steep discount to get it out of their house and to get some money back for it at all. So, um, yeah, the, I would think that in this community especially for penny pinchers, uh, super deal hunters and stuff like that. Uh, this does not look as enticing, but, um, you know, there, this, there is a market here. And I think the good thing is, it's not like Jawa is trying to push it into your face. 
that you should sell directly to them. Their first option is to list your card for sale and get what you think you can get from it. So I, I think this is a nice addition. I'm very curious if they if they ever do get to sharing the numbers, or maybe I can ask Ryan privately, uh, you know, how this program is doing. Yeah, uh, Ryan from Death Egg saying, Jason Whitmer, hopefully this is still a pilot program. Yeah, if they expand the service to CPUs and other products, yeah. I just think right now, GPUs is definitely like, GPUs is the hot item right now because it's the primary driver for gaming performance. But not only that, there's no competition in the new market, right? Like, people want used GPUs because you can get stuff for like $150, $200, and you pretty much can't get anything reasonable in the new market uh, at that price. Whereas if you were to look at CPUs or other components, um, it's not as big as a price difference new to use. Like if you look at RAM, I don't think that a, a service like this would be good for RAM because used RAM is like five, maybe 10 bucks cheaper than new RAM. Same with SSDs. Like a one terabyte SSD, you, uh, NVMe drive, you can get for what, 50 bucks now? People aren't selling them for much lower than like 35, 40 bucks. So it's not, it's, it, there needs to be a, a big enough like uh, gap in the price difference for it to be a good candidate of category for this. And Death Tech is literally the only one receiving and testing all the cards. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Yeah, that too. In terms of reliably testing and cleaning it and shipping and stuff, imagine getting a motherboard. You know how annoying it is to clean motherboards? There's so many delicate components on there uh, and just so many nooks and crannies. Yeah, for sure. Okay. We had a post from uh, stream submissions from, oh my goodness, Thingiverse. What do I think about this? There's a lot more, but I don't want to spam. Really cool 3D printed ITX cases. Okay, so they're listing. Um, oh, we have we have fun posted something in here. Uh, so let's take a look at all these things. So you posted. So Thingiverse is like the 3D printing STL files that you can download. So people have these plans for 3D printed PC cases. Oh man, look at the renders on this. This looks really nice. Thanks for, yeah, for sure, Death, anytime. I appreciate you stopping by too. I, and you know what? In my latest video, I did take a look at Jawa for AM3 Plus stuff, but some the motherboards weren't the chipsets I was looking for. And there was like maybe 18350 on there that it was the going price. And I wasn't trying to pay like 80 bucks for an 8350. That's why I've been looking at the local market trying to find one for like 40 or 50 bucks. Because <laughs> why am I spending 80 bucks on a FX8350 when something like a i3-10100, you can find that for like 60 bucks and it will run circles around it in gaming. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, so this case is pretty interesting. So this looks really nice in the little, in these little three D renderings, but I, to my knowledge, uh, most case. Wait, what is this? Oh uh, yes, yeah, small form factor cube two point If you were to print this entire case, though, it does have all the ventilation and stuff in it. But my issue is that I've seen three D printed computer cases. We're gonna take a look at some of these other files too. Um, what is this? Open frame. I have a 3D printer, so technically, I could build something like this. So you can 3D print your own cases now. This one... Uh, okay, so this one's actually a... Pr wow. This is specifically for two radiator setup, it looks like. Uh, what about this one? Okay, this one's more... Oh my goodness. This one is a more standard kind of square-ish case. Um, was this one actually 3D printed though? I'm trying to look, these pictures, they're not letting me zoom in enough on the quality. So I'm gonna pull up a different 3D printed case and I'm gonna talk about what my issues is with 3D printing your case. Yeah, these pictures, my issue with 3D printing stuff is that 
most hobbyist printers, like, you know, either myself or people who don't have money to spend thousands and thousands on a machine, the print quality is not good enough for me at this uh, point in time. So the printed computer case. A lot of the times you, you can kind of see the resolution of the print. Um, I'm trying to find a... Does Reddit have one? All 3D printed computer cases. Like, uh, let's see. Uh, this one actually, uh, I mean, I, I, I understand it is 3D printing stuff in general is like the coolest thing ever. To be able to create whatever you want out of just generic material uh, without having to have specialty tools like lathes and band saws and stuff like that. And to make these complex shapes that you could otherwise never be able to create with like hand tools and stuff. It's really cool. It's just the quality of the print. If I can get a good picture of it to come out. Um, for me, it's it would bug the crap out of me. Like, actually, this one, some of these ones actually look pretty decent. But I mean... There's always going to be imperfections with 3D prints, right? Unless you have, like, some kind of super professional, uh, like, industry-grade 3D printer. You're always going to get stuff like this in the prints. I guess, I think you can probably sand it. But even if you sand it, some of the stuff I don't think is going away. So, I don't know. Like, it's really cool. Uh, and it definitely has the utility. But aesthetically, it is not, a, like, to par for me. Sergeant Reaper with the super chat. I will pull that up in a second. A lot of 3D printed cases. Yeah, they definitely, for the most part, you have to use it because you can't, a standoff is so small that you cannot reliably 3D print that with the threads and everything. Uh, it's just way too small unless you, I, I wouldn't doubt that there is a 3D printer out there that can print screws and standoffs to be used for computers, but you're not doing that as a hobbyist printer for sure. Like the, you can't print a layer that small. Hey, what's up, Rexy? It's been a while since you've been here. For sure. I do remember that name and that little smiley face emoji that you have at the end of it there. Um, okay, what was this other thing that uh, someone else posted in the stream submissions here? We've got, we have fun. This was recently released. This is the Asus Prime, oh, micro ATX case. Oh. How much is this going to be? This looks like, this is a micro ATX. The, where's the gallery? The, uh, here it is, okay. So the interesting thing, this looks, so this is what the Asus Prime AP201. This looks like an ITX case because of the way that they laid it out. When you traditionally think a lot of ITX cases, the power supply goes either above or below the motherboard. Here though, they've moved it to the front. So you, you can shave off a lot on the height. So you fit the uh, micro ATX board here and then you put the power supply here uh, so then you kind of still get a size that is more closer to an ITX, like small form factor build than a standard micro ATX tower. Uh, I actually like the look of this a lot. Hey, Danny, will you be doing meet and greets? June asks, is this regarding LTX? I'm going to get to your thing, your comment in a second, Sergeant Reaper. I was just, it's because I already had this pulled up. Uh, June Lee says, will you be doing meet and greets? So if, are anyone going to LTX by chance? If you're going to LTX in, is it, Ju yeah, July, sound off in the comments. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do like a meet and greet per se, but if people like see me and run up to me, I'll, I'll for sure stop and talk and like, you know, 
whatever. Uh, in 2019 at LTX, I had everything from people wanting to take pictures with me. Some people had me sign like their computer parts or their mouse pads. So yeah, I, I just don't think there will be enough people who are going to LTX that want to meet up to like put together a meet and greet. I don't want to like say, all right, the Nerd Up Budget meet and greet is going to be on Saturday at 3 p.m. And they have like four people show up, right? So I don't think there's that much interest for people to meet me. So if you do run into me, though, I will be very easy to see at LTX. I'll be a guy with a camera, most likely out, and wearing like a bright colored t-shirt, one of my own personal merch. Feel free to stop me and talk to me if you want. Yeah. Sean, are you going to LTX? Okay. Uh, so Sean is going to LTX. Kevin Go may go to LTX. Uh, Val uh, Valhaya is going to LTX. Not sure if anyone else from Java is. Ryan, you gotta go, man. LTX is like I would say I have more fun at LTX than PAX because it is specifically the tech community, bro. If you could somehow convince them to let you go, you should definitely go, Ryan. It is a very fun time. Igor's going. Okay, nice. So there is a fair amount of people in here that are going. Uh, Hobbs is also going, of course. He's going to the whale land with the big whale, uh, ticket that he got. Uh, Jason's gonna be going to LTX, so, yeah. Alright, a good number of us uh, are gonna be up there then, for, for sure. And then Shauner, I don't know if Zach has officially announced or talked about going to LTX, but, um, in the, in the little tech fam chat that we have going, he has not... Uh, for sure fully committed yet from what I've seen. So um, I, I I don't know. I would say Zach would for sure have to go this year. He didn't go in 2019, and that was a big year. After all this COVID stuff, I, could, I can't see Zach not going. Mag says, my girlfriend and I are going to LTX. Nice. Nemus Texas needs someone to go with a Gamers Nexus t-shirt. All right, someone need to go with a Gamers Nexus t-shirt. How many people are flying into LTX as opposed to the amount of people who already live nearby in Washington or Canada or something like that? Okay, now going back to what Sergeant Reaper said earlier. Sergeant, hopefully you're still there. Thank you for the $5 super chat. Let's get to your question. Nerd Budget, when you use V1 Tech's GPU backplate, were they the same size as the GPU stock backplate? Mine got, mine I got is a little off from the RTX 37. It was pretty much a perfect fit. Uh, both times. Um, yeah, so... How far off is yours? Can you take a picture and send it in the uh, somewhere in the Discord channel? I'm curious to take a look. I would say they were pretty much as close as they could have been. Obviously, it's not going to be like a 100% one to one, but my, like the ones that that were for the plates, and I got one of the ones I got was the ASUS Strix one. That one had like weird shapes on it. It was like pretty much 99%. I don't think it could have been done any better. Is what I'm trying to say. It was pretty spot on. You, which 3070 GPU do you have? And yeah, if you have any pictures, I'm curious to see. I thought v V1 Tech, from what I've seen, was pretty good about that. Like, if they, if it like is a visually, aesthetically, you know, like if they did a bad job on it, uh, from what I've seen from their interactions with other customers, uh, they would fix it because it's a pretty expensive product. Like, I don't think it costs them that much more to produce something else, but you know, their black plates are like what. 70 bucks or something so you have a pay uh just put in the stream submissions igor says i'm driving to seattle from north texas oh another t texas person the week of and i have a mini vacation for go before going up to vancouver nice yeah i think i will be driving from uh from washington up to ltx so all right v1 tech backplate being off. Let's see. Side re. Oh, you're side re? No, you're not side re. What is this? What are we looking at here with the Fantex?
Thank you for the membership renewal, the best YouTube. Amtrak Cascade started up their service to Canada, so I'm probably going to take the train from Seattle. Nice. Okay, okay. Actually, I might actually look into that. We'll see. Driving back in 2019 wasn't that big of a deal, so to be able to have a car up there for off, you know, non-LTX hours to, like, get around and stuff, that might be convenient, so we'll see. <laughs> I need a new username, don't you? <laughs> I mean... If you change your username, I'm gonna, like the best YouTube. I am very, I am very familiar with that name. So when you change it, it's gonna be a big change for me <laughs> to get used to whatever new name you choose. All right, so this is what Sergeant Reaper posted with the backplate. So if I'm gonna take a look at here, yeah, you might have to. Uh... So let me open this in a new browser. Um, okay. So looking at this from the two pictures that we have here. Oh yeah, okay. So the the front the cut on this side looks fine in my opinion. Uh, and I'm guessing that's just the gap. Because in the other picture it actually looks flush forward and back. Yeah, so this Wait, 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 wait. Is it overhanging both on the front edge and the rear edge? Is that what's going on? Or not the rear edge, but the side edge? Is it overhanging on this side and here? Just, oh, so just the end. So this front side is still flush. Yeah, that... I'm trying to think. I I definitely did not have overhangs <laughs> uh, on here. This Actually, this whole thing looks off. If you, Okay, let's, let's zoom in on here. If you take a look here, you can see following this these cutouts, it should be aligned. It's not only that this edge is a little bit bigger, just look at how this like stair stepping design lines up with here. I guess it it looks like if you are able to shift everything to the left, but it's running into this this bracket right here is the issue. So you would either have to tr you would have to trim this is what it looks like to have everything here shift back. But uh, I mean a normal person is not going to be able to trim this and leave a clean line. Like if you were to you would have to trim it and try to sand it. Uh, and you'd have to try to like line it up. You shouldn't even have to deal with this as a customer buying a backplate from a company that claims that they can get, you know, pretty much a perfect fitment. So I would definitely, did you reach out to customer support? Is this that much thicker? This, I'm trying to see. It is this this is definitely floating because they give you some magnets that does cause it to float a little bit above the actual graphics card backplate. I'm trying to look at this thickness. Does it actually look that thick when we look at it? Maybe like a little bit thicker than usual, but that I wouldn't have noticed that had people not said anything. Thicker than a snicker, baby. There are magnets on it. It's thin to me. Yeah, I mean, I, it definitely is floating a little bit due to the magnet. So I would say this looks like most like a normal thickness of acrylic. But you have the G oh Gigabyte Eagle. Okay, I did remove the top one so the end does not hang off. Um, so you, what you did is you removed this bracket so that you could push it back more. I mean, did you reach out? Yeah, it is, is. It looks like everything is shifted here. Honestly, it's not only like this part's overhanging here. This this like stepping cutout is moved a little bit too far to the right to be lined up to here. And if you look at how much it over, you can see some overhanging on some of these edges too far to uh this the right high uh the right here.
Oh, you left a bad review, but we'll reach out to customer support. You're supposed to reach out to customer support before leaving a bad review. I guess if you can remove the review after it, if they fix it, then yeah. But yeah, definitely reach out because a lot of these companies, they they will try to, you know, do right by you. And if they do, then the bad review could have hurt them at the end of the day. All right. Um... Yeah, definitely reach out to customer care or reach out to uh, like Twitter and stuff like that. They are very active on social media. Um, okay. Uh, I, all right. So we are. Oh my god, two hours and forty minutes. How did we? How did we get here? How did we go for this long? How did y'all let this happen? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm going to spend the last five or so minutes just ch hanging out in chat. So. Attention is away from the browser and it's fully focused on chat. So we can just talk about whatever now. Yeah, B1 Tech, they run sales year round. You should be buying from B1 Tech at 50% off because, again, it's an aesthetic thing. It's not a performance thing. Um, and it's just, at the end of the day, you know, uh, acrylic sheets cut out with uh, RGB strips attached to them. Like, Paying, you know, upwards of a hundred dollars for that is very expensive. What was one of your best pickups on a local marketplace site? Honestly, the best pickup still gonna be let's see if I can find it. I said I wasn't gonna go to the browser. This video right here, six years ago, I picked up a two hundred dollar GTX ten seventy, and the date on it is March twenty six, twenty seventeen. I believe the the first crypto boom was already well underway at that point. Um, and the ten seventies in the used market were usually going around four hundred bucks, I believe. And I was able to pick it up from somebody. I wasn't even trying to pick up that he was trying to sell the ten seventy. Here's the listing for $350. I was trying to buy this RAM from him for 30 bucks. We got to talking and then he said, you know what? I, I'm just trying to get rid of these parts. I'll sell this for 200 bucks. So I got the 1070 uh, for 200, probably the best pickup that I could remember just given the circumstances of like the mining boom happening and everything like that. Yeah, if you want to watch the video uh, about it, I will share the link right now. I mean, whoops, I just messed that one up. Even until recently, the 1070s held on to their value for a long time. Like, it took a long time for 1070s to come below $200. So the fact that I got that back in early 2017... That was like an unheard of type of deal. And it was in good condition too. It wasn't like refurbished. It wasn't, it didn't have like, you know, major issues or anything. It was just, just one of the more memorable deals. On it. And I used it in my personal system, which makes it a more personal deal. Uh, 6750 XT Newegg deal. Yeah, we should talk about that while we're just chilling here. And I'm just answering questions. So 6750s right now. Are going for here's one for 370, but then we see one the other day for 350 bucks, man. 350 dollars right here, and it comes with The Last of Us. Is this deal still going on? Oh, the sale, the sale's over, but this still not too bad of a price for a 6750 XT for, and you get the new Last of Us, which apparently has pretty bad optimization issues, but nonetheless, it's a 60 dollar game from a triple A, you know. It's a triple A title considered. Um, but yeah, like pretty much bang for buck right here. Brand new card. Hard to beat this. You could catch that and more in the deals channel on the Discord server. I just posted some RAM today. 66 bucks for 3600 CL18. 32 gigs for 66 bucks. 
There are some other more off-brand ones that have gone lower, but from for T um, Team Group Vulcan Zs, uh, this is like one of my go-to kits of RAM right here. Thirty-two gigs. RAM is so dirt cheap. Fart on mic, please. No, no, I would not do that. Oh, the sale is still on without that. Did they not show the promo code anymore? I'm not seeing the promo code actively on this page. Do you still have to find the promo code? Because normally it says right here or right here, there's a promo code. Okay, so you paid 40 bucks for the, the, the back plate. Okay, gotcha. Still, reach out to them. 40 bucks is, you know, that's still a decent amount of money. Like, they should have sent you uh, something that fits pretty perfectly. The game came out yesterday, so I assume that's why they stopped. On the, the promo deal? Use 3070 Ti for 360 versus 3060 Ti for $300. So what, from 300 to 360, that's a 20% increase. Do Are you going to see about a 20% increase? Uh, in some titles, I guess I could see that happening. I mean, either either or. Which one would I go with personally between those two? Probably the 3070 Ti. I mean, if you can afford it, why not go for the better card? Like a FPS per dollar difference for those two, I don't think it's going to be that, that, that big. Not sure if you talked about it, but what are your thoughts on Frameworks announcements? Show you the AMD 13 inch. Uh, Oh, wait, I, I did see something about it. The modular gaming laptops and the impact on the used market. Okay, so I didn't fully read. Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't know. So, modular mobile devices, I haven't. Oh, yeah, Dave TD just made a video eight hours ago on this. The gaming laptop problem has been solved. No, it hasn't yet. And I, I already know what this is going to be talking about. So this, I'm just going to go through the video. So you have a modular gaming laptop, right? So this is a very cool concept because one of the biggest issues when it comes to laptops is maybe we can talk about this next stream. I need to talk, write this down because we're going to run out of time here. Uh, framework modular laptop. Yeah. Uh, actually, I think I might save this for the next stream. So Ant V80, Thank you for bringing this up, but uh, I actually want more time to look into this before talking about it. But I don't think this is going to work, and that's me being a pessimist, which I'm not always a pessimist, but um, it's going to be a long time if we ever get to the point where this is adopted by, you know, a lot of hardware manufacturers and companies. It's, I think it's a cool concept, but will not actually ever like come to fruition, unfortunately. How do I get my teeth so white? I don't drink coffee. I don't drink tea. So I think that helps. But just brushing, you know, regularly twice a day. I don't use teeth whitening strips or anything. It might be the lighting too. or It might be the white balance. My teeth are not super white. They're like the normal shade of yellow that most people have over time. Because teeth are not naturally super white. People's teeth are only so white because normally they use whitening strips or they get it professionally done. But most people's teeth usually have some kind of yellowish tint to them. I think it's the lighting that's making my teeth look white. Mag says, I'd buy a A770 over the 6750 XT. Really? The 6750 XT... Definitely, actually, ever since the driver updates, it might be more head to head, but um, interesting. 
I guess for around this. Well, the A770 is cheaper now. It's like, what's the, what's the price on New Egg right now? Uh, I thought there was cheaper ones. A770, yeah, you can get them for, yeah. yeah. So it's not the same comparison. You're comparing a 350 ish dollar card to a $270 card. Uh, this is the 8 gigabyte one. The first, the cheapest, where's the 16 gig ones? I guess the 16 gig ones are closer to 340. Okay, so it is a closer comparison. You get two games. Yeah, you do get a lot with the uh, with the the Intel bundle. Uh, the coolest thing in here, I think, is this Topaz Gigapixel AI. So this is just like you can take low quality images and stuff and upscale them. Uh, I guess some people might care about XSplit. I don't care about that. You get these two games I've never even heard of or probably even care about. But yeah, you do get some kind of bundled stuff in here as well with the Intel. Okay, I think that's going to wrap it up for tonight's stream, though. Oh, my goodness. We are almost three hours in the stream. But, I mean, if people are here to hang out, which there are still a fair number of you here, then I guess that's not too bad of a thing, right? All right. Um, yeah, so next video coming out is going to be a $1,000-ish dollar budget build that I'm trying to fit in an AIO, uh, a 360mm AIO, actually. So uh, it's not going to... It's going to be some aesthetics, not completely... Not completely killer price to performance, but I mean for a thousand dollars the performance is gonna get it's still gonna be pretty good um, So I'm trying to get that out and then uh, and I think that's pretty much it. I have other stuff that I'm working on that I cannot talk about until it actually comes out I'm in the process of trying to get the AM3 motherboard and an 8350 But everyone keeps flaking on me So I might have to do a local meetup with one of the viewers who is trying to sell it to me At least the motherboard. I still have to try to source the uh, the eight-core CPU, but yeah uh, so that's what's coming up. But other than that, uh, next week, let's talk about the framework modular laptop. I think there's a lot to talk about there. Um, but everyone, have a great rest of your night. Thank you for coming out. Uh, have a great rest of your week and weekend coming up. And I will see you in the comments when the new video drops, as well as in next week's stream, hopefully. And if you haven't joined the Discord yet, link will be the, below in the description. Definitely check that out if you want to be able to get more in contact with me throughout the week when it's not like video upload time or um, stream time. So have a good night, everyone, and I will see you later.